Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thanks so much for tuning in to Pods of the Multiverse, Season 2, our final episode. We're an unofficial Dungeons & Dragons podcast. We play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Scala, and I will be portraying the world of Ravnica, and joining me are my three friends navigating that world. My name is Jeppy, and I play Illipel, whose exquisite taste in jewelry probably will not bite them in the ass. Mm. I'm Jimmy. I play Cloric, the Is It Engineer Goblin, who... We had it. We almost yeah, had I it. Yeah, I did. I had it. I had it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the finale. It's fine. That they think they had yeah, it. No, yeah, that's what they... I'm <laughs> <laughs> Who won't be that easily deceived. Or will he? Unless he knows that he will be. If they, if they know... This is going yeah. nowhere. If he didn't, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> I'm Andy. I play Alwyn, the Golgari druid, who just finds himself sometimes stuck in a 90s family drama about two brothers who just can't see eye to eye sometimes, but that's not going to slow him down because the anxiety is just not going to get to him and his mission right now. And that's how I feel about Alwyn going into this finale. Wow. it's a lot there. Prison Break Season 5, starring Alwyn and Edric. <laughs> I, I was thinking, like, after school special. Like, oh, your your brother is getting into some weird stuff. You better have a frank conversation <laughs> with him. It was very nerve-wracking, okay? We'll talk about it. <laughs> On the table uh, per- talk. Per- perhaps we will. And yes, next week, in lieu of our usual episode... We will have a full-length table talk on the regular feed where we'll be talking about this whole campaign. So please do join us for that to get our insights on how this whole season has gone. I'm super excited for that. I'm also super excited for hearing how you feel about our show. And if you could share that with us in, in the form of ratings and reviews, which are good for our, our uh, position in the algorithm. Seriously, though. Well, uh, even Give us some bad reviews, even, if you yeah. want to. We Those should. are fun. Well, they help us get yeah. be better. We, we, we should be better. We'll talk about it, and we'll what all have that? a laugh together. If you give us a review, we will put it on the intro of these <laughs> yeah. episodes. Right. I will read it in a funny voice. Yeah. Roll the episode, Jimmy. Yay, finale! Okay, let's get back into it with a recap quiz show. The game was last week. The points could get you a inspiration die. What happened when last we left our heroes? See, they're saying this kindly because we could potentially run into some real bad shit this game. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I think I think two inspiration die are in order, but whatever. That's just one person's opinion. All right, we hung out around Stonehaven and... We fought some Eternals near a vault. Andy did turned into a spider, was it? <laughs> and went boop, 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 boop through the little crack. All right, crack. so before Jeppy steals every plot point. I want that damn inspiration die. I'm hungry for it. I did wild shape into a spider to go into the vault to see exactly what we were protecting and found some real bad shit, like a giant god Eternal from the battle. Also, this was all because when we went to Stonehaven, I negotiated with Rena to give us help for our final incursion, and this is the job that she had for us. Indeed. Alan also talked with Edric. Yeah, well, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it didn't really go well. It happened, though. It did happen. Yeah. Uh, we beat a... What was that thing? An Eternal on a Manticore. Yes, we was riding a Manticore. Zero points for me. <laughs> also, Alwyn was on two death fails at the end of that combat, and that was rough. Clark didn't help. <laughs> Manticores are nasty. Oh, Vim also showed up. Yes, that was how you got to Stonehaven. Yes, and right. not only providing teleportation, but told us about the spider. Nope, the spire <laughs> of the centuries. Centuries, not Se- centuries. 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 Yeah. Yeah, centuries. 
It, do you know where it is? I know where it is. I know where it is. Thank you. It's in the second precinct. Hello. No, in the Liev Watchtower. You didn't say the detail that matters. Point for me. Thank you. Yeah. yeah all right. I think Jeppy should lose a point for gloating. Me too. I don't even disagree. I should. Can you dock me a point? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right now I have Jimmy and Jeppy at two points and Andy at three. So, Andy, you can take a little inspiration and die. I will gladly take that. All right. I'd like you to make two checks. Two seems reasonable. First, make me a sleight of hand check. Okay. 19. Okay. You are very practiced at this. You, with deft precision, slide the blade between your fingers, you grit your teeth, and you shear them off. Oh! Make me a constitution save, please. I don't think I have a good constitution. What is it? Three. Oh, 19 on the dice for a 22. Very impressive. From the weapon, you do take... What's your strength modifier? Uno. Okay, you do take four points of slashing damage from doing this. Reasonable. But you are not crippled or incapacitated in any way by the pain of this amputation. I see them do this and just... Player, I I, I am like... I didn't expect that. But <laughs> Alwyn... <laughs> Real quick, before Alwyn gets in a word, Illipel will say, I told you the problem could be handled by me. It seems as though you had a lack of patience. There was plenty more use to get out of that ring, but I suppose we'll do this your way. And hands back the knife. Just instinctually, Alwyn will throw a second level cure wounds at you. Okay. For 11 healing. You regain the hit points, but the wound closes and the fingers do not regrow. How many fingers did I cut off in doing this? Two. I thought so. It was a loop, like a ribbon, that slid over the ring and middle finger. Yep. Until you receive a regeneration spell to regrow limbs. What hand were you wearing the ring on? I didn't specify. I just put that it was a ring of metal. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, I didn't specify. So unless the DM wants to have a specific ruling, I would love to say it was my non-dominant hand. That would okay, be pretty yep, fun. That's fine. I will accept that. Okay. <laughs> Great. One of those things you don't think through. You know, you don't you don't think when you're taking a ring you're going to cut the fingers off. Yep. But now you know. You know. Now all of us know that. I will say any spells you cast using that hand for the somatic component will have a 5% chance of failure. Oh, I figured they'd be gone. And any attack rolls you make using that hand will be at disadvantage. Spells I cast... Okay, I thought you were talking about the spells specifically cast from the warlock spell slot I was granted. Oh, yeah, no. The Warlock spell slot is gone. Those are gone. Okay, thank you. That is what I thought. Okay. The ring is not being worn. Any benefits of that are gone. Exactly. Uh, Your connection to your patron has been severed. Got it. What are you going to do with the fingers? That's me asking. Clark's not in the room. Clark can ask it when he wakes up. I guess. (laughs) What are you doing with the ring and the fingers? Looking to Alwyn and then kind of peering down at the severed fingers. It's evil touches us wherever we go. What would you have me do with these? Leave them here? (sighs) I think I know someone who will be able to help you with these. I pick them up. I wrap them in some components from my herbalism kit Mm -hmm. with the intention to take them back to Stonehaven. I just sort of look at Illipel, honestly a bit shocked. (laughs) You don't say. I mean... As you're wrapping up this ring, go ahead and make me an arcana check. Untrained. That's a 16. Okay. Yeah, you think you've contained it pretty well. You don't think this amputated finger is going to do any more harm in this state. Illipel... You've done a brave thing, and I know you're so much more than what this ring was able to give you. We have all the power we need. And I sort of gesture to the three of us when I say that. Clark's just asleep in the corner. Clark's just asleep. (laughs) We have all the power we need. (laughs) With Clark, we have all the power we need. (laughs) Snoring. (laughs) Snoring. (laughs) I shall continue the watch. Get some rest. Ah, should be. No problem. Waving the stumped hand in Alwyn's face. I'll go back to sleep or try to. Okay, you do. You find sleep, but it is not restful. Mm Mm-hmm. In your dream, you find yourself in a strange, colorful void. Uh Uh-oh. Swirls of blue and motes of black surround you in this empty space, and you see a figure standing opposite you. He's tall, dark, with a little bit of salt and pepper gray, dreadlocks hanging down to about his shoulders and probably the most notable feature about him as you look at him is most of his torso and his right arm are all made of this same metal that your ring was made of 
and he begins to approach you. You take my power, and you think you can just throw it away. Prove me otherwise. Oh, fuck! Now, now, you know too much. I can't have you talking. This metal arm reaches out and grabs onto your face. Can you make an athletics check, please? Oh, good. Oh, great. That's a one modifier. This is going to be a... Yeah. Six. Oh, shit. He grabs your face with his metal arm, hoists you about a foot off the ground, and you begin to feel a pressure on your skull. Make me an intelligence save. Okay, also not good. Mm. So my modifier is a one, but no worries. I also rolled a one on my dice. Oh no! <laughs> you feel these metal fingers crush your skull and reach into your mind and... Relish in this, Scala. Relish in it. You feel an enormous psychic pain as your thoughts and memories are rifled through and ripped apart and when you are dropped to the ground you feel like something is missing. The blue void around you swirls and coalesces around the man's metal navel and he is gone. And when you awaken you have lost your memory of everything that has happened since you picked up the ring. Awesome. Everything? Everything. Can we very quickly enumerate what those things are? Oh, man. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. I hope this is worth it from an entertainment perspective. <laughs> All right, let me... I'm going to take notes here in my character sheet. So, from my understanding, you picked up the ring from Garavash right at the beginning of downtime. Oh, man. That was a long time ago. Mm. Oh, what the fuck? Yep. From there, you went to Stonehaven. Oh my god. Everything about the Eternals. That's that's also the, is it right before or right after the excursion to the Wilted Petal? Before. Before. Before, before you stole anything Fuck. from on El Gast. Before you read any of her papers. Oh, this was a bad idea. Before you went to the exchange. Before you went into Brevislav's tomb. Before you were under arrest. This is such a bad idea. I... For the record, I love this. I love how cutthroat this is. Same. I am fucking grinning ear to ear. This is gonna be a Holy nightmare, shit. but this is great. So yeah, your deal with the Irregulars, your plan to attack the Spire of the Sentries, you cutting off your own fingers, none of that you remember. So was it instantaneous, like put on the ring flash to this moment? No, no, not even. Go into Garavash's office. Have that conversation about power and the right people having the power, but the instant Garavash puts the ring on the table to offer it to Illipel, that's gone. Wow. Fuck. And now they're here. And now they're here. Oh, no. Also, all of this stuff about Analgast, I'm trying to remember what their very initial hunches were, and I think it was just about, like, she was still out to get them, and that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, out to get them. Another conspiracy that Illipel was throwing around before meeting with Garavash was that Anal Gas conspired against them by burning down the storehouse, even though they themselves did it. Correct. In session zero. Yes, yeah. in session zero. Oh my god. So those two pieces would still be yep. known to them. Yep, but you don't remember... The Eternals... The Eternals, the Nothing. connection between... Taganti and the yep. Consortium. Yep. Great. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. Just had to do something cool. Let's get back into it. All right. Before you wake up, can you make me one more constitution saving throw? It's not over yet. <laughs> yeah. A good opportunity to do one more shitty thing to Illipel. Probably feels right. Okay. This is good. That's a 16 plus 3 is 19. Okay. You feel like you might have woken up also with a level of exhaustion. Uh, why not? Wow. From this very stressful dream where your brain was crushed by a metal hand. Brutal. No. But you managed to fend that Do off. Do they remember the dream? I would say they don't remember the person's face or voice. Mm. They do awaken from a troubling dream where their head was crushed by some sort of metallic device. Cool. You awaken with a splitting headache. 
in this strange place. Excellent. And you all receive the benefits of a long rest. Oh, good. That, great. Where are we? What are you talking about? This place is unfamiliar. What? How, how did we arrive here? It'll tell what's going on. Last I remember was midday. You were waiting outside. I was talking with Garavosh and... I sort of approach. What are you talking about? That was weeks ago. Illipel, what happened? We- weeks ago? That's nonsense. We were just there. That's the last thing I remember. I don't recall... As you're gesturing, you notice the you. ring and middle finger on your left hand are missing. But the fuck did this happen? What is this? Why are oh, my fingers dear. gone? <sighs> Spoke these bones. You've got to be kidding me. Little pal, you cut your fingers off last night. There was a ring. A ring? It was telling you, trying to command you. It was giving you spells. It was... No. Can I make some sort of insight or perception or arcana or anything? Any sort of check. Yeah, you can definitely make an insight check. Or an arcana check. Cool. Cloak, get up. Something's happened. What is it? And I rolled a 22 insight. Yeah, pretty clear. Illipel is suffering from some... Massive memory loss. What's all the yelling about? Hey. Oh, we got a med- medic on site. <laughs> Sorry. Just I love him. I notice Illipel's missing fingers, and I raise up my hand in the same kind of... Rock on. <laughs> 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 what happened to you? Alwyn sighs heavily. I-, I can't answer that question. I don't know what happened to me. My fingers are gone. All right. Last night, I approached Illipel. Asking them what was going on with their ring and the new powers and all of this suspicious activity. I said if it was going to be a problem that we had to deal with it. So they went and cut the fingers off, removing the problem. But now between then and this morning, they don't remember any of that or the last several weeks. It seems. Wow. So you don't remember anything? There's nothing to remember. The last thing that happened was I went to Garavosh's office while you waited outside. Wait, why'd you cut your own fingers off again? I show the party the fingers and the ring. Is the ring still there? Mm. Oh, come on. Don't give me that look. I like the idea of the fingers walking away by themselves. The ring is still there. And the fingers. I sort of unfold my little medic pack. This, this ring. Ew. It morphed over the last several weeks. It got bigger. It took over another finger. It gave you a couple of spells. Last night you were pacing about this vault. This vault that Renna told us to guard, to help us with the assault. The Spire, Jalen, and the Rejava. You don't remember any of it, do you? It's a lot of words. Barely any of them have meaning. I, I, I remember none of it. We have to get back to Stonehaven right now. All right. Illipel, Illipel, we'll, we'll resolve this. We'll, I'll do something about it. If, if there's any memory of you trusting me like you have, past few days, past few weeks, trusting us company we've built here. I'm not gonna let this stand. I was just warming up to you, too. Alright, let's go. Illipel will look to Clark and Alwyn, probably with the most look of, like, fear or lack of confidence that they've ever displayed. You see Illipel give you this piteous look and you proceed on your way back the paths you came to Stonehaven. Alwyn, just give me a survival check with advantage to lead the party. I don't Assume anything's going to happen, but you never know what the dice say. Uh, another 15 on the dice, so that's another 22. Easily you can make it back to the lower entrance to Stonehaven, up through the dungeons. While we're heading back, I'll, like, start filling Illipel in on what the fuck has been happening. Yeah, great. This might be the first time Clark is hearing a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> Illipel, tell me exactly when your memory cuts out. I walk into Garavosh's office. We spoke of power. We spoke of Anel Gast briefly. We spoke of the Guild Pact. Does anything happen when they say that? Nothing happens when they say that. Really? Nope. Because that was coming from her. That wasn't coming from... How do you think she knew where they were? Uh Uh-oh. Whoa. (laughs) Anyway, I will continue my line. We spoke briefly of the Guild Pact, and then everything... It doesn't go black, but it turns to mist. Just can't recall the details. It kind of trails off. Had we already been to to the Great Dragon to niv it? We had. I, I have a recollection of that. Mm. Aye. It was while we were waiting for someone else's memory to be restored. Illipel looks to the ground, upset. I put a hand on Illipel's shoulder as 
I'm guiding us back up. Well, quite a lot has happened since then. And I start filling them in. I start with the exchange, Jalen, the descent into the crypt, finding the connection to the Rugerva, and then getting surrounded by the arresters. I go through all of the big parts. Alwyn, because I know he doesn't really know a lot of what was happening on Illipil's side, all he says about all of this business with the ring and these strange powers is pretty much everything that transpired last night. Mm. Okay. This sort of growing concern, and also the two major things about on Elgast, going to the Wilted Petal, that whole bit with the Eternal and her, and then when Illipel took Alwyn to the Violet Rose and that whole exchange. Okay. And if that's everything I can get in on our trek back, that's what I try to start filling them in on. Let me ask if there's, is there anything you're leaving out? I mean, all of this stuff about the consortium, Alwyn doesn't really know. So that's gone. Yeah, that's the point. You motherfucker. The link between Taganti and Anel, that stuff... Illipel told Alwyn about. Correct. So that stuff I would try and piece back together and fill in. The whole thing with, you know, Taganti and this crazy shit with the gyres, and then how we ran into Anel, and then you stole those documents and discovered that there was this huge link there, but you didn't know, or at least you never told Alwyn anything more about that. Okay. Yeah. You forgot I killed Bippo. Remember Bippo? Yes, Cloak was very brave. Oh, that was evident well before my memory loss. All right, you arrive at Stonehaven. What would you like to do here? I look for Renna as quick as I can. Yep, she's in her audience chamber with Pella and Yorge, and there's a few other people you don't recognize milling around. I give my standard bow. Are these more Golgari? Are these somebody else? Yeah, make an insight check. <laughs> 14. Yeah, they seem like other scavengers. They appear to be armed haphazardly, as if they've been called to arms on short notice. I got it. We've returned from the vaults. And I'm to presume they are secure? For now. Did you get my message? I already was aware of the magnitude of the cargo we were protecting. Stonehaven's walls are strong, and it can quickly muster capable defenders to prevent any losses. Forgive me, but if you are aware of this, why is it not more well guarded? Perhaps an oversight on my part. We encountered much more than skeletons. Eternal, Manticore. And you are able to repel them? Aye. Then my line of defense was adequate. Adequate for now? Aye. If you believe that it may be a problem in the future, I can see to it that some additional preventative measures are put in place. Aye. I turn towards Illipel. Something else happened while we were on guard. I don't know if it's within your power, but Illipel here. Something has happened. A severe sort of memory loss. A sinister attack on the mind. After a sort of different preventative measure was taken. And I show her the ring, the fingers, and explain sort of what happened last night. Okay. That metal is like none I have ever seen. No doubt it is valuable, but I would be careful who you show it to. As for you, Elf, come here. I will attempt to break whatever enchantment has a hold over you, but I cannot promise success. The mental manipulations of the Demir are slippery. Come, come close. I must lay hands on you. Illipel will walk over. She places a clawed hand on your shoulder, one on your chest, and she casts Remove Curse. But it feels as if you still can't remember anything. Feels about right. I appreciate your efforts, but all that I remember was it was laid out before me by Alwyn. I'm afraid my memories are not intact. Svogthir's mossy beard. What have you gotten yourselves into? I literally don't know. <laughs> Thank you for trying to fix this memory curse, but perhaps there's something that can be done about these. And I show her Illipel's severed fingers. <sighs> Well, it's beyond my power to heal, but there are some very learned liches, and all of them answer to Storev. To be noticed by her 
You would have to do something very impressive. <sighs> very well. Perhaps a matter for another time. I've mustered what rabble I could on such short notice. There is a company awaiting you in the courtyard if you are prepared to make your incursion. I would look to Clork. But, oh, ready as we'll ever be. And go make your lives worth living. And a death's worth dying. And yours rounds up the other few soldiers that are wandering around in here and brings them all out to the courtyard. You see a dozen Golgari scavengers. They have leather armors. They're carrying staves and that's sort of a collection of humans and Devkar and elves. And uh, also out in the courtyard is Lana. Yeah. Sick. I see her before I approach. I look to Clork. Look, do you think... I don't know what's going to happen, but... The Great Dragon already helped us with one memory problem. Do you think this would be something that he would be able to help us with? I mean, it's certainly something he could help us with. I wouldn't want to be in the room when you ask him, though. <laughs> it really has nothing to do with the job we were given. Always keeping us on track, Cloak. Well done. Speaking of which... Lona! Oh, hello. Heard you might need some help. Oi. All the help we can get. Well, I'm more than happy to knock some arrestor heads together. Glad to hear it. There was one outside, keeping watch over the bridge, that I already sent packing. Did you? Yes, but, well, I think they know we're coming, and we know where they're waiting for us. It's just a matter of seeing who has the strength and resolve to persevere. I think we know the answer to that. I sort of give a small wink and turn to the crowd of... Scavengers. All right, listen up. You've answered the call. Today we march in the spire of the sentries against a force who would seek to pervert the use of an ancient relic against the Guild Pact and against all the guilds of Ravnica. Alwyn suddenly realizing that he's not one for any sort of speech or pomp hesitates a second. Philippel will give Alwyn a look. That says, you got this. Just keep going. Golgari, it is time to fight for your lives worth living. And then death's worth dying. This whole band answers. And with that, I suppose I begin to lead us out of the Undercity. Okay. They're going to be expecting us, right? I seems so. So we got to come up with something that they're not going to guess. Zoitha and the Irregulars, they're quite close to the Spire already. All I have to do is take a few minutes to set up my skyride spell, and they'll be able to engage. Then what? Just charge right at the front door? Aye. Draw out as many as we can, and the three of us make for the tower in the sun disk. That's the goal. Okay. I lean in closer. Are you, uh, worried at all about a forgetful friend here? Not anymore. Well, good enough for me. Let's go. How close to the tower do you want to emerge? from the Undercity. To be honest, I'm trying to, like, set a DC. Like, if you're trying to do something complicated, that'll be a little harder. I would imagine we want to do something along the lines of emerging at different points and just trying to get as close to our larger party as possible. Are you emerging a few blocks away and then trying to sneak up or trying to... That was going to be my idea. Basically, like, get up and try and get into a position where these Golgari and the Irregulars can basically be in two different places. And we can see what's going on from some sort of hidden location. Right. Good. That makes sense to me. So to set up this assault, I'm going to need two sets of checks. One, a survival check with advantage. You have a whole band of Golgari scavengers with you. They know these tunnels very well. And then second, as you approach the spire, a group stealth check. Okay. 23. 17. 5. With advantage! Ah! Oh. God damn. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's average 15. You find a spot to emerge from the Undercity that meets the parameters of what you wanted to accomplish. Great. I'm gonna get to work on Skyrite immediately. Okay. And as you move towards the spire through the alleyways, can I just get a group stealth check from everyone? And I'll throw up Pass Without Trace for this. So All plus right. 10. 29. 24. Not great, actually, but it's still going to be a 22. Let's see if any of these Liev Knights can even see you guys. 
beat cop's perception is... Well, there's a possibility. Oh, boy. No one rolled a natural 20, so that possibility is not realized. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just so casually about it, too. You slink through the streets, evading the eye of any wayward arresters that might notice you. Any of the griffin riders circling through the sky above the spire. And you cast your skyrite spell? I do, and I have to kind of sit still for a minute while I do this, because I'm going to ritually cast it. I don't want to burn the spell slot. And I unfurl my great cloak and trace with my hands the symbol of the guild pact over the moss and spore-covered cloth, almost as if I'm writing something in sand over the entirety of this great cloak. And then when it's finished, I take it and throw it up into the air, and all of the spores and moss and growth extend up out of the cloak and into the air and form this sky ray. This sporific cloud swirls into the sky it forms a symbol of the Guild Pact above this spire in dark greens and browns. And you observe, as Zytha, very calmly, in now proper Boros uniform, oh, shit. walks up to one of the couple of arresters standing guard at the door of the spire and says, I'd uh, like to report a crime. Uh, yes, what is it? This. And she winds up a fist and oh, decks fuck. the guy. Yes! Oh, and so good. you see, as the irregulars start pouring out of alleyways, the doors of the spire burst open and a couple dozen arresters swarm out onto the street. Hell yes. The irregulars and the arresters begin clashing, and you feel like you might have an opening to get into the spire. Yours will say, Should our unit help down here or. Do you want us to go up with you? Oh, fuck. That's actually a really good question. We want as many out here as possible, right? There's no guarantee we won't find it a more deeper up the spire. We may need distractions on every floor. That's a fucking good point, too. Glimpsing at what's immediately unfolding, can I get some sort of insight or perception check? I'll allow insight or history. Okay. And anyone can roll this. Natural 20 for a 27 history. Fucking nice. I got a 25 insight. Okay, very good. Both of you appraise the situation. You see that Zytha and her group are outnumbered, mm. but they appear to have the advantage in being prepared for this encounter and fighting in a gorilla, cagey right. sort of manner. So you think that they might be evenly matched with the arresters on the ground here. Unless I'm wrong, I take that as they should come with us. Okay. With us, George. And they will follow you inside. As we go, I'm going to throw up my symbiotic entity. Very good. You charge up the steps into this spire. It's a tall, ten-story alabaster tower. It's a circular building between two triangular pillars facing south. And then as you enter, you see a third triangular pillar on the north end. You storm into this building. You see an office space, a handful of benches and desks that have been hastily abandoned in this chaos. There's a staircase on the west wall sort of curving around to the north, and there's a couple of arresters standing in front of it. Let's, uh, let's roll initiative. Okay, cool. For the record, I immediately am getting, like, Shinra HQ vibes from this, and I am fucking here for it. 100%. 1 billion nice. percent. Also, for the record, I would have put up mage armor, like, around the time Alwyn did this guy right. Fair enough. Wow. Both of these beat arresters rolled three on their initiative. They're going to be dead before they even get to act. I got a 12. 14. Eight. Okay, so I've given you all some NPCs to run. If you could all roll those into initiative as well. Oh, yeah. Lana's got a 21. So yours rolls like Clork. This is at five. <laughs> nice. 16 for the Undercity Rabble. Okay. Lana is up first. Yeah, she is. She's going to go in with a claw. Okay. That should be a 23 to hit. <laughs> Absolutely hits. She's going to go in for a big 13 slashing damage. 13. This arrestor standing guard on the stairs ooh, ooh, coughs up some blood. I thought they were gruel rioters. What's this nonsense? 
Rabble is up. Rabble, <laughs> gonna walk up and hit all of them, if possible, with Thunder Wave. Okay, yeah, definitely can. If they could all make me a con save. Beat Arrestor number one gets an 18. Number two gets a 19. Great. I think they still do take half damage, though. They do. Ooh, and I rolled just about max total of seven thunder damage. Okay, the one that Lana stabbed in the gut falls over unconscious. The other one does appear able to fight. We'll see for how much longer. Illipel, you're up. Illipel will unsheath their rapier and charge towards the enemy in a lunge attack. Very good. Make your attack roll. Okay, it's going to hit. It's a 19 on the dice plus mods, so I feel like we're good. Yes. Okay, great. There's nine piercing damage. Staggering back this arrestor on their last legs. Alwyn, we go to you. Mona, I like your style. Direct. And I'm going to go and attack the remaining arrestor with (laughs) a nat one on the first swing. Okay. And second swing. There we go. That's a dirty 20. That'll hit. It's going to be six bludgeoning and four necrotic. This one falls down in a heap. The stairs are ahead of you. If you all don't mind just keeping this initiative order as you ascend the tower, Mm -hmm. and I'll just roll the bad guys into it. Yep. There are only stairs, right? We don't really see anything else on this floor. You see a bunch of desks. You see what appears to be an office in the northeast corner. Okay. No other ways up. Can I determine what goes on in this place by looking around? Yeah, roll, I'd say history. Investigation would work too. Okay. 21. Nice. Yeah, this looks like a reception area, you know, where people would come to report crimes or leave police complaints, things of that nature. All right. Good use of a roll. Let's go up the stairs. Okay. Can I get a marching order? Probably initiative order, right? I guess not necessarily. Maybe Alwyn and Lana up front. Okay. Caster's in the middle and yours in the back. Okay. Something like that. And we can say the rabble travels with you in one big press. Cool. Among us. Mechanically, are they just like a swarm? I use the Theros mechanics for like hoplite troops. Oh, the hoplites. Nice. To sort of make a stat block for them. Sick. Yeah, that's great. One more thing. Can I get somebody to roll me 2d6, please? I'll do it. That's right. Roll low. One and five. That's six minutes. That's 60 rounds of combat. Oh, wow. Uh What? (laughs) All right. So you head up the next stairs. You come to a door in one of the three pillars. Yeah, I guess check the door. It appears to be locked. Gluck, your services may be required. What services? I remember this. You have a knocking spell. Oh, yeah. I think that was kind of just a one-time thing. All right. I don't have knock anymore. That's fine. (laughs) Hey, what's the hold up? I can deal with this. George, I think you know just what to do. George's great club deals enough damage to the door to stave it in, and you are able to proceed onto the next level. Coming out of the north pillar, you see on the east and west sides of the building rows of holding cells, and there appear to be four more guards in this room, and I will roll them into initiative. From here, do we see anybody in the cells? Roll perception. Sure. That's a 21. Yeah, as you're coming into this room, you see a very well-dressed human. You don't recognize their face, but their garb is surprisingly formal for someone who's sitting in jail. Basil Kirch. Well-dressed human. Okay. All right, Lana's up first. Cool. There's four of them? Yep, there's four of them. Are they all near each other? There are two rows of holding cells, and there's two guarding one side and two on the other. Okay. Sure, she'll cast fairy fire on two of them. Okay, cool. They are going to attempt dex saves. Does a 15 pass? It does. Okay, so one of them saves, one of them fails. Okay. Under City Rabble, you are up. Let's do another Thunder Wave then, if there are four of them. Okay. Again, with your range, you can probably only get two of them because they're sort of spread out around the circumference of this room. Yeah, I'll still do it. Okay. What's the DC? 13. One passes, one fails. Okay. 
10 and 5 damage. Okay. And one of them is pushed back 10 feet. This group of Golgari scavengers raise their staves and rhythmically beat them against the ground and push out this thunder wave, forcing these two guards to collide comically with each other. Hell yeah. Illipel, you're up. Okay, I'll cast fairy fire on any number that I can. I know one was already targeted, so if I can hit all three, since they got moved around, cool. If not, I'll hit the two that aren't. Yeah, I'll allow it. Two fail, one passes. Awesome. And then my bonus action, I will turn to Clark. If there's one thing I do remember, it's that you are tremendous, but he is a little help. And I'll cast Bardic Inspiration. Very good. It's ironic, because they wouldn't remember Clark razzing them about never casting Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> But they would remember all of Jimmy's shitty single-digit die rolls. Yeah. (laughs) The foremost guards begin to advance. One of them is going to attack the rabble. One of them is going to attack either Alwyn or Lana. I guess Lana has acted, so they'll go after her. Sure. They come bearing their long swords uh, against the rabble. An 18 to hit. Does hit. And a natural 20. Okay. Hit me with it. So a total of... 19 points of damage. Okay. And then one runs up to Lana. A 14 to hit. Misses. Okay, 20 to hit. That'll hit. She's going to take 10 points of slashing damage. Okay. And we go now to Alwyn. Alwyn's going to bonus action shillelagh the gavel and is the one that's attacking Lana one of the very fired ones? Yes. Cool. I'm going to swing on that one. Okay. 23. Hits. That's 8 bludgeoning damage and 3 necrotic damage. Exactly how many hit points they had left. That one falls down. Sick. Guard number 3. Is gonna make me a constitution saving throw. Please. Okay. 17. Fuck. Okay. Is going to make a set of attack rolls against you. Bring it on. Okay. A 10 does not hit. Nope. But a natural 20 does. (laughs) Okay, yeah. You're going to take from this... Jeez! 16 points of slashing damage. Okay. Oy vey. That's all of my temporary hit points. Rolled pretty high there. That was the guard clerk. We go now to you. How many are left? Three. Okay. Are any of those hurt noticeably? There was one who got hit pretty hard by the thunder wave. Seems a little shaky. Got it. I'm going to run at the most hurt looking one and kind of fling my body at them and grab them and do a shocking grasp as I cling. Nice. They are wearing plate armor. You do have advantage on this attack roll. Hell yes. 16 to hit. Unfortunately does not hit. Great. You could have used Bardic. You can still. Well, technically no, since you told me it misses. I was quick on the draw on that. You can still. Okay. 19. Does a 19 hit? That will hit. Okay. Great. What are we doing here? Shock and grasp. I would like a little bit of credit, please, for the bardic inspiration. Okay, so I think back to Illipel's words, and I think, were they being sarcastic when they said tremendous? (laughs) (laughs) That's great. And that's going to be one lightning damage. Oh, Oh, no! God. Oh, my God. I got to remember not to brush my uniform so hard. (laughs) That sucked. Okay, well, at least (laughs) he can't take reactions now. So I'm just going to saunter away without disengaging. Okay, you saunter away. (laughs) The last guard, still hanging around confused, is going to advance, going to attack the rabble. An 8 will miss, but a 21 will hit. Jesus, this die! 10 points of slashing damage, their maximum. We go now to Yorge. All right, Yorge. Yorge sees what just happened with Clark, and he's going to move in and attack the one that Clark just attacked and kind of... Do the job properly. Show Clark how it's done. Yeah. And he hits with a 19. Absolutely. Yeah. For 13 bludgeoning damage with his great club. Yeah, get him yours. That guy is now a couple feet shorter and not voluntarily. (laughs) (laughs) See, little guy? That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still two guards standing. We go back to the top. Lana. She's gonna try and claw him. And with advantage, right? Because fairy fire is still up? Yeah, the last two guys are fairy fired. That's a nat 20. That'll do it. This is 4d8. That's 16 slashing. That is exactly how many hit points one of these guys has. Hell yeah. 
So Lana puts her claws right through one of these arrestors' eyes and they fall to the ground dead. There's one left. Undercity Rabble, we go to you. The Undercity Rabble will all extend their hand out in unison and cast Poison Spray. Nice. Con save, please. Okay. Nat 20. Oh, uh, that doesn't do it. That just negates, right? Yeah, there's no half damage. Okay. That was them. Illipel, you're up. All right, well, dodge this then. Illipel will run up and... Were they one of the fairy-fired ones? All the ones who are still standing were fairy-fired. Okay, then, yeah, regular attack. Beautiful. 22. Hits. Cool. That is max damage, 12 piercing damage. All right. This one looking quite hurt as you slide your rapier between the plates of their armor. Illipel, that guy's dead. Alwyn. All right. He's going to swing. Okay. With advantage, that's 19 on the first hit. Yes, their AC is 18. 10 bludgeoning and 5 necrotic. The last guy falls if you'd like to put any flourish on that. Alwyn sort of sees Lana much more skilled than... He might have first assumed seeing her in the back tunnels of the Undercity. Being thoroughly impressed, tries to viciously slay this final guard with a stroke of his gavel through the center of the breastplate, right through the heart. You cave this breastplate in. (laughs) The guard coughs up a wad of blood and falls to their knees. You smack them again over the head and they drop dead. You're in this room with these holding cells. There appear to be some people in some of them. Do we recognize any of them? So there are four holding cells on each side of the wall. The first ones closest to the door you came in are empty. In the second set, it was hard to see when you first came in with all the chaos going on. It's a very small prisoner. You see like an imp flitting around in one of the cells. Oh, shit, is this the guy, is this the Rakdos guy from the exchange fight? The well-dressed person that you thought was sort of odd next to the imp's cell speaks up. Why, yes, I'm so glad you remember me, Korzak. Ah, this fucking guy. What an ironic twist of fate, that because of you I am in here, but now you may be my liberation. Who is this exactly? (laughs) Oh, come now. You don't mean I didn't make an impression on you with my theatrics? Oh, the irony. They don't remember you at all. uh, Illipel will put a hand up. Because, as you say, you did not make an impression. Oh, I suppose I shall have to improve my craft. Come, break me out of here. Are you issuing commands from behind bars? We have a common enemy, do we not? One of those guards you so handily dispatched must have some keys on them. All right, I'll check. Roll investigation. 14. Yeah, you find each of them has a key ring. All right. Well, here are the keys. Well? Clork, I don't know that, uh... Illipel will step between Clork and the cell and say to Korzak, and if we were to take these keys and throw them down the hall, out of your reach, what would you do? I suppose I should be very upset, but I'm in a cage here. Poor me, there's nothing I can really do. Yet you sound gleeful about this. You concern me. Quite glad I don't remember you. We in the cult of Rakdos tend to keep a positive outlook on things. Well, I suppose that'll make us feel much less guilty about leaving you here. Oh, if that is your desire, then so be it. I sort of give a agreeable nod to Illipel as I turn to look to see if there's anybody else. Yes, in the far two cells behind the triangular columns, you see a pair of goblins. Get the no fuck fucking out. way. Get out. Hey, hey, it's Glock and Zlock. <laughs> yes! You remember us? Who? Glock and Zlock, the taxi service. These goons thought we was fairy and wanted criminals. Oh. Fellas, let me get that for you. I'm going to let him out immediately without even consulting with the group. Okay. Furry and criminals? What, friends, what do you mean? Well, you know, they didn't tell us much, but, uh, you know, they were collecting up known associates of yours. Oh, shit. And we're known associates. We told them we ain't know nothing. Yeah, we ain't snitches. Well, you are truly honorable, and for that we thank you. Oh, we thank you for helping us out of this really unfortunate predicament. As it seems, it's getting a little violent and chaotic over here, and we are but two humble taxi drivers. We are going to make our 
hasty exit. What about your machine? Where's your vehicle? Ah, uh, impounded. Oh. We're gonna have to steal a whole- I mean, uh, build a whole new one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you say impounded, you mean here? Nah, this ain't the place for that sort of thing. Mm. I think they got storage warehouses somewhere in the 6th. Alright, as always, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, and, uh, we'll see you around. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs> and they and they saunter past all of these oh grimy undercity sewer people and down the stairs behind you. Can I like pick up a mace or something off of one of the arresters and throw it to him? Like you might want to take this for your trouble. They hold up the long sword. I've never swung a great sword before. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. You just put the sharp end in the other guy, right? Aye, that's right. Eh, I guess it couldn't hurt. Worth a few Xenos, worse comes the worst. And they head down the stairs. I always like those guys. Them I remembered. I extremely helpful. So, as they leave on the south wall, you see another staircase curving from the south to the southwest column. All right, let's keep going. Okay, you head up the stairs. There's a door in the column. It appears to be locked. Can I unlock it with the keys? You can attempt to. And after some trial and error, you will succeed. Hell yeah. Great. This door opens up into a room that has three triangular stela in the center of it. The sides of these standing stones etched with engravings of figures. The one directly in front of you as you enter appears to be that of a judge. And then on the far side of the room, going from the northeast curving around to the southeast pillar, there's another staircase. Do you think it could be some sort of trap? But the judge? I mean, I think the whole legal system's a trap, but otherwise, that nah, seems kind of safe. <laughs> Holy <laughs> system's a trap! Amazing. That's great. Alan's going to look around and try and see what's up before passing any sort of threshold past these standing stones. Roll me perception or investigation. Cool. All right, that's going to be a 24 perception. Okay, you do notice with that perception check that on the outsides of the stela and on the floor and on some of the columns, there are some writings in a language that you don't understand. None of us understand? I don't think any of you speak Sphinx. (laughs) Oh, no. The script, I don't recognize it at all. Can we try and go to the stairs? Sure. Is that what you're going to do? Yes. Forget this, I'm going up. Okay, as you begin to cross the room... Yeah, here we go. You hear a sullen moaning as these three gangly-armed spirits pour out from each of the three stela, and they all, they point at your group accusatorily. It's Orzhov all over again. And I'm going to roll them into initiative. Ilpel, this is like some of the obstacles we faced in the tomb. It's a shame I don't remember. Would be useful to understand the enemy. What is, Elwyn, your initiative modifier? Mine, plus two. Okay, can you just roll off with me? Because another one of them rolled a 12. I got a three. I got an eight, so they're going to be 12 plus. First up, the judge accuser comes out of their stela. The first thing I need everyone to do as they emerge is make me a wisdom save. Illipol rolled a natural 20. Undercity Rabble, it's a 6 total. Alwyn's got a 22. And Lana, a 17. Clark's got a 5. And Yorge has a 17. Okay. So, Clark and the Rabble are all pacified. You cannot take the attack action or cast spells that deal damage or force a saving throw. You can repeat the save on the end of each of your turns against this effect. As this creature emerges, you all feel this sense of sedation and calm and a desire to be good citizens and obey the law emanating from this creature. Okay, got it. And as it emerges, it's going to reach out and attempt to lay an admonishing touch on... Alwyn! Okay. But a 12 will not hit as these long spectral fingers grasp for you. I don't think so. And now Lana is up. Cool. She is not pacified. She's going to... She's just going to go ahead and attack the one that's engaged with that one. Okay. 
Gonna be another nat 20 for Lana. Very good. So that's gonna be 23 slash damage. It seems resistant to non-magical damage. Cool. Soul Sworn Accuser number two. It emerges from the Stela depicting a scribe writing laws into a long scroll. As it emerges, it lets out an intonation of baleful accusation. Everyone make me a con save. Boy. Oh my god. 14 for Alwyn and for Lana. Okay. 14 for Illipel and the Rabble. 8 for Clork. 11 for yours. Clork. Are those your final answers? They have to be. I'm asking Clark. No, they don't have to be for Clark. But it just seems a little too early in this end game to be using these luck points. Those are my final answers. Okay, Clark, you're paralyzed with oh, guilt. No, that's bad. As this creature intones, that's its turn. Undercity Rabble, you are up. The Rabble will just cast Cure Wounds on themselves. Okay. So. 11. Okay, they recover that many hit points. Cool, cool. That'll do it. And Illipel, it's now over to you. Do they repeat the save for pacifism? The rabble? Yes. If you're pacified, you can repeat the save at the end of each of your turns. And uh, what was the save again? It's a wisdom save DC 13. 18. Okay. They overcome this feeling of passivity. Beautiful. Uh, I am really not feeling liberal with the use of my spells as Illabelle. If I'm going to cast Fairy Fire, they should all be near each other, or at least two of them. Yeah, you can get two of them. Let's do it. All right, cool. A 12 and a 10 are not going to do it. Correctamundo. So both of them are illumined by Fairy Fire. Beautiful. Nice. Okay. A third spirit emerges from the final Stela. This one inscribed with an arrester depicted standing boldly against the forces of chaos. And this one is going to make a couple of admonishing touches. Illipel, you just cast a fairy fire. Let's pick on you. A 13 won't hit, though, will it? No, it will not. But a 16 will? I think it's a tie. Then it will. Then it will. Yeah, that's right. Correct. Okay. You take from this admonishing touch 12 points of radiant damage. Out of here. All right. We go now to Alwyn. Cool. Okay, so they've obviously got some non magical resistance. I'm going to attack the same one that Lana just attacked with the Shillelagh Gavel. Can I get into either a flank or a fairy fire for this? The judge and the scribe are fairy fired. Cool. Here I go. These are not great rolls. That's going to be a 13 to hit. That will hit, still. These ghosts are wearing nothing but robes. Hell yeah. So that is going to be eight bludgeoning and four necrotic, and this is magical damage. Okay, very good. The magical damage all goes through. The necrotic damage seems somewhat reduced. Okay. Bonus action. I think about using healing word, but I'm just going to swing again. Okay. Uh, This will be a 21 to hit. That'll hit. And this is four non-magical, four necrotic. Okay, so it takes four damage. It's hard to tell with its spectral form, but its movements appear to be somewhat sluggish. Now, Clork, we're over to you. I can't do anything, but do I repeat the pacify save? At the end of your turn, yes. Okay, but not the other save, I would assume. Not the paralyzed save, no. Right, so I'm still Mm. paralyzed, but I can repeat the... Yep. Mm. Well... That's a five. I'm so sorry, Clark. You are still pacified and paralyzed. I mean, what else do you expect at this rate? Well, since I'm pacified, I don't have that much of a problem with being paralyzed. This is whatever. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. All right, uh, Yorge. Same situation, me and Yorge. Yorge is paralyzed. Yeah. So Yorge just doesn't get a turn. Yorge just doesn't get a turn. Comes back around to the first spirit. This is the one with the aura. Has anyone not saved against this? Just Clark? Everyone but Clark has saved. Okay, so yeah. It continues for Clark, but everyone else is immune to this aura. So they're just going to make an admonishing touch against Alwyn, who hit them most recently. Uh, 12 will not touch, though. Nope. Okay, Lana's up. Awesome. She's going to hit him. Slash him. This is with advantage. This is 17 plus mod. Yes. So we got 
That's 18 slashing damage. Okay. That's Lana. Anything else from her? He's still up? Yep. Okay, wow. I believe she has two claw attacks. Oh, is that what the slash means? Yes. Oh, I've been reading her as only just having one attack. Okay. Yes. Yeah, she's going to take that second attack. Okay. Uh, that's uh, 19 on the dice. Hits. For an additional 11. Okay. Spirit number two, this is the one intoning the baleful accusation. It continues to do that. Can everyone make me a con save? Everyone, everyone. Everyone, everyone. 19 on the dice for Alwyn. 13 for Clork. And fucking 27 for yours. Hell yeah. 17 for Illipel and a 5 for the Rabble. Okay, so only the Rabble takes this damage as this accusation begins to creep into your minds and overwhelm you with the weight of your guilt. Um, They take 7 points of psychic damage. Everyone else saves and takes no damage. We are over to the Rabble. Very cool. How many can I hit with a thunder wave? You can hit all three of them. Let's do it. All right. Save. Con save. Two, three, and five on my dice. Nice. They all fail. Get the fuck out of here. That's that's what the rabble says as they do. (laughs) Eleven thunder damage. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Is it two? It's two d eight, right? Correct. I rolled two d six. Do you want me to re-roll entirely? Roll it again. Yeah. What did I say before? 11? 11. I'm glad we got less than that at 9, Thunder Damage. <laughs> so glad I caught myself. Really? You've only reduced the damage by 1, as they seem resistant to this damage as well. <laughs> Great. Even better news. Cool. That was the rabble, Illipel. Okay. Illipel looks at their Excel sheet with their remaining spell slots and says, Time to attack with the sword. <laughs> okay. Does any one look more injured than the other? The judge looks the most injured. Yeah, the one that Lana and, and Alwyn are fighting. And is that one of the fairy fired ones? Yes. yes. Beautiful. Let's do it. Natural 20 on the first roll. Fucking A. All right, Natty 20. Let's do it. All right, 16 piercing damage. Nice. Only a wisp remaining of it. We go now to the third spirit, the Arrester. Arrester is going to make one attack against Lana, one attack against Al. Natural 20 against Lana. Okay. She's going to take 21 points of radiant damage. Okay. Uh, And then against Alwyn, a 16 to hit. 16 hits. And you are going to take 13 points of radiant damage. Okay. And now it's your turn. Okay, so even this one that we've been, like wailing on is still up barely it has a lot of resistances yeah okay so i'm going to attack that one first okay it's gonna be a 19 plus mod hits for 10 magical bludgeoning and four necrotic okay this one falls to the ground just a loose sheet floating in the air anything else from you alan and then i will offhand against the other one that's engaged with us Okay. That is going to be a 18 plus mod. Hits. For six and six. Okay, so six. Very good. Clork, wisdom save, please. 18. Okay, you're no longer pacified. The scribe is still, however, reading off, as you hear it in your mind, the list of your many transgressions, and you're still paralyzed by this. Clork does nothing and says nothing. We have to do something about that one. Yours. Yours is still paralyzed. I'm so sorry, Jimmy. (laughs) That's all right. Back to the top. This spirit's dead. Lana. Is the one that's attacking us the one that's reading? No, it's a different one, right? No, the scribe is reading. Okay, the scribe. Lana's going to start going after the scribe after Alwyn called that out. Not many of these spells are particularly offensive, so she's just going to multi-attack. That is a 21 to hit on the first. And a... 17 to hit on the second. Both hit. So that is... Just do both of these together. Yep. 32. Okay. The spirit continues reading. Everyone make a con save. (laughs) 16 for Alwyn. And a 17 for Lana. Very good. 21 Illipel. 4 Rabble. 6 for Clark. And another 27 for yours. 
yeah. Okay. Clark and the rabble are feeling very guilty, taking 11 points of psychic damage. As the scribe continues to read, rabble, then illipel. Yeah, we'll hit the scribe with poison spray, please. Con save. I rolled a 12. They add nothing, so I think that's a fail. That fails. All right, 10 poison damage. Okay. Again, they seem resistant to most forms of attack. Every fucking thing. Yep. Cool. Got it. <laughs> that was the rebel. Illipel, we're over to you. Okay. I'm going to attack the scribe. Okay. 17 hit. Hits. That is nine piercing damage. Okay. This one looking a little haggard. And now it is the arrester. The arrester is going to do what it's been doing. One against Lana. Uh, 16 hits for 10 points of radiant damage. One against Alwyn. 18 hits for 12 points of radiant damage. Jesus, okay. And then it is Alwyn's turn. Okay, I'm going to hit it. It's going to be a 21. AC is 12. And 12 magical bludgeoning and 6 necrotic. And then Alwyn sort of seeing the injuries begin to pile up in his form is going to bonus action, healing word himself. Come on, we're not there yet. We're not done. Gaining eight. Very good. I hope you don't mind. I am going to skip over Clark and Yorge's turns. Yep, saving my spell slots for the final boss. There it is. Brilliant strategy. We go back to the top to Lana. Okay, she's going to multi-attack. 19 on the first hit, 18 on the dice in the seconds. Yep. We got another 31. Even halved, that is sufficient to dispatch the scribe. Its oppressive voice fades from the room. Clark and Yorge are no longer paralyzed. They're able to act. Well done, Lona. I do what I can. And then it's the rabble's turn. And there's one spirit left. Do another poison spray. Very good. Con save, please. 13? Ties. Okay, then it saves. And I don't believe poison spray is one of those half damage ones. Nope, save no. negates. Illipel. A standard attack from Illipel. Let's get at it. Fairy fire on this one? No, this is the one who is not fairy fired. All right, it's a 12. 12 is their AC. Brilliant. Nice. Seven piercing damage. Okay, now it is that arrestor spirit surrounded by adversaries. I know it's resistant, but I'll start using Halo on this one. Yeah, sure. Con save of 17. Fine. It's going to take one swing at Illipel, who attacked him last. Does a 14 hit Illipel? No. Okay, then misses. And then another swing at Lana. And a 15 will miss her. So now we go. Oh, thankfully, mercifully, now to Clork. Yes. Great. Let's give it a... How about a lightning lore? Make a strength save. Okay, it rolled a 17. <laughs> okay. But it subtracts a lot from this because its strength <laughs> is 1. Oh, good. <laughs> what? So I think that's a 12. <laughs> yes. That's. I was hoping that Holy a shit. ghost wouldn't have very much strength. So, yeah, that fails. And I'm going to pull it 10 feet towards me. Okay, everybody who's got reactions can swing at him. Fuck yeah. Okay, 24 from Illipel. Yep. And uh, 19 from Lana. Yep. 7 piercing. 14 slashing. Okay, 7. So it's now at 25. Everybody hear that? Scala said 25. Oh, I heard that. And Clark, you also deal some damage. Yep. That's six lightning damage. But the true power of lightning lore is friendship. Of course. Yep. It does appear resistant to that damage as well. Oh, fuck right really? off. <laughs> Acid, fire, lightning, thunder, cold, necrotic, poison. Fuck these ghosts. The only thing it's not resistant to is force. Force and psychic, right? Force and psychic. Yeah, that tracks. Anyway. 22 health left. 30 health left. Not that you would have any way of knowing this. Yorge can act again. Oh, yes. Yorge. Come on, Yorge. Yorge is going to use his multi-attack. He's going to run up and I guess he's going to swing a great club at this spectral form. Seems sensible. 17 to hit. Yes. Okay. 13 bludgeoning damage. I assume it passes through somewhat and hurts it as it does. Yeah, a little bit. 
and then kind of on the rebound, Yorge lunges and bites. And that's an 18 to hit. Still hits. And he bites four. Six piercing damage. Chipping away, chipping away. Lana. Gonna claw. Okay, well, that might miss. Plus seven, that's a 10. No, that doesn't hit. Here's the second attack. That is a 17. Hits. And that is 15 slash 15, okay. Undercity Rabble. Just gonna whack him with the staff. Yeah. 15. Hits. Eight bludgeoning. Okay, and now we go to Illipel. How hurt are they looking? Barely just a wisp of a ghost left. Okay, all right, then we're just gonna do a regular attack. Is there any flanking going on here? They're pretty much surrounded at this point. The rabble rushed in, Lana rushed in. Everybody's all around them. So yes? Yes. Good, because that was a nat one. Right, let me try again. Okay. All right, this is better. 17 total. Yeah. That is six piercing damage. Okay. It's going to get one more turn. I'm going to use my reaction for Halo. Okay. 14? That will fail. Okay. Oh my god. It finally worked. Maybe it'll actually help us. Probably not. That's six necrotic damage. It helps. Still got three hit points left. All right. Uh. Let's see. One at Clork, one at Lana. Clork, a 12 doesn't hit you, does it? Does not. But a dirty 20 will hit Lana. Yes, it will. She's going to take 15 points of radiant damage. Okay. It's starting to look a little hurt. She's got a lot of health, but been tanking a lot of damage this fight. And that was the Arrester Alwyn. Enough of this. 17... And it's going to be 13 magical bludgeoning, 6 necrotic. Alwyn, would you like to add some flourish to your banishment of this spirit? Alwyn will take his gavel in one hand, his mallet in the other, give two big strikes with both, and then crossing them together, taking both and swinging straight down from the top for a final blow. All right. The ghost dissipates, vanishing into nothingness, and... The stairs lie ahead of you. I'd imagine that we all, everyone in the party, raises their middle fingers, those of us that have them, at the spirits. (laughs) Certainly. Cool. I just wanted to make sure that was canon. Fuck the undead police, as it were. (laughs) Fuck the undead police. (laughs) Do we have a sense of how many floors are left? Roll me perception. Clark, you can roll me engineering for this, too. All right. Perception, that's a 15. 12. Both of you judge from how tall each of these levels have been and how tall the building was from the outside. There's probably two more floors of this nature. Lana has quite a few spell slots here, and she's going to use some of them to cast some cure wounds on some various people. Illipel, how are you looking? On a scale from 1 to 36, I'm about a 24. Okay, she's going to use one on you. You heal for 10. She's going to use a second level one. On herself, she heals. How is Clork? Clork's the 24 also, out of 35. Okay, she's going to use a second level one on Clork. You heal for 16. Come, come, everyone, gather round. Recover your strength. And how is the rabble looking? On a scale from 1 to 52, 16. Oh, shit. So for the rabble, she's going to use a third level. Quick maths here. 15 for them. All right, the rabble will also use a second level spell slot. They will use cure wounds at second level on themselves. That is 13. Depending on what's ahead, she might use a couple more, but for now I think we're good with that. Rabble is at 44 out of 50. On a scale from 1 to 52. Of course. On a hypothetical scale. A hypothetical. I'm not telling you how much health they have. I'm just on a hypothetical scale. Hypothetically speaking, yeah, of course. Lana has third level druid spells. She's an Undercity Medusa who's also a druid. Just like yours is a troll who's also a fighter. It's great. I love it. Well then, shall our merry little band be on our way up the stairs? Aye. You head for the stairs. You come to a door in the southeast column. It appears to be locked. Clark can find the correct key. You pass through it into another chamber. Opposite you, on the northwest, heading towards the north pillar, there's another staircase curving up, and between you and it, you see a ring of ten suits of armor standing around a pedestal. 
There also appear to be some weapons and things hanging on the walls. This appears to be some sort of armory. I don't trust this room. Neither do I, Cloak. I'll go ahead and cast Detect Magic. I'll use a spell slot for it. Okay. Cast it instantly. All of it very magical. Roll me Arcana. That's a flat 12. Strong transmutation beyond that. You can't tell what it does. Powerful. Not sure what else. Cloak, can you get any more sense? No. I already rolled and didn't say that I rolled a six. <laughs> can I also roll Arcana? Yeah, you can roll Arcana. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay, 19. Yeah, you think that many of the things in this room are enchanted with a version of the animate objects spell. Of course. It is very likely that these suits of armor will animate. That was my fear. I'm not sure what the trigger would be. And there was a pedestal in the middle of the room? Yeah. Probably that pedestal. Yours speaks up. It looks like there's a lot of them. We can hold them if you want to make a break for the next floor. There it is. There it is. I was saying mine out of character, but yeah. Yours, all of you, we wouldn't have been able to come this far if it weren't for your help. With that, Lana is going to use up some more of these spell slots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave them with nothing. That's good. Well, she's going to use one of them on her, and then she's going to use one on Alwyn, because Alwyn is still pretty hurt. Gain 12 back. She's going to use another second level one for Alwyn, and Alwyn is back to full. Okay. Because if he has to tank this fight alone, it's going to be tough. I have another wild shape. I'm going to re-up my symbiotic entity so I get my temporary hit points back. Okay. Where are you at, Alwyn, with your health? I'm full. Clark? Full. Okie dokie. Artichokies. Illipel, are you not? Might as well be. Okay. Not worth even these NPCs' spell slots. <laughs> okay. Cannon fodder, though they may be. <laughs> Some good ass NPCs, though. Yeah, I'm glad we took them with us. Like they are, yeah. Now, that's why, like, I feel literally guilty using a spell slot that probably doesn't mechanically matter because emotionally, I want them to be okay. As we abandon them, we don't know that. We don't know that. Yeah. Even if that's true, even if we did know that, I still wouldn't do it. I care about them. Yeah, good shit. The good peeps. Thank you for everything. All right, your good peeps. Actually, yours will stride into the center of the room. Hell yeah. All right, you soon-to-be recycled scrap. Come get some! <laughs> nice. And indeed, some of the suits of armor begin to come to life. And as you make a break for the pinnacle of this spire, you hear behind you, you hear behind you, yours and Lana, and this ragtag rabble of scavengers engaging with these animated objects. Hell yeah. You notice the door to the final floor is left open. Uh oh. You walk inside and you see the domed roof of this spire flecked with stained glass, letting light peer through it. In this golden radiance, you can see Jalen sitting astride his griffin on the opposite side of the chamber. The floor has the symbol of the Azorius engraved into it, the circle within a triangle within a circle. And Jalen notes your entry. At last you have come. I hope it is to turn yourselves in, but I doubt that to be the case. Where's the sun disk? We know it's here. I do not know what you are talking about. Inside check. Yeah. Nat 20. He does not know what you're talking about. To think I saw eye to eye to you. No, I know you're just a pawn. We don't have to do this. Back down now. Metakiah believes that your submission will restore the order that has been disrupted. I will do everything in my power to achieve that end. So be it. And I charge in and go to attack. Let's everyone roll a new initiative for this Reroll. fight. Cool. Oh, okay. Nat 20 with a 24 total. Clerk didn't do too well, based on what I'm seeing Jimmy. This is the last bad roll of the campaign. That's not true. <laughs> as flashy as Alwyn was trying to be, he only got a 10. See, it almost said 20, and then it rolled over onto a 6, so it's the same as my initiative before. 8. Oh, wait! I'm going to use my inspiration on this. Okay! That actually helps quite a bit. That's a 17. What did you have, Illipel? 24. Okay, then you're up first. All right. Illipel would see Alwyn going for his weapons. Exactly. Seeing Alwyn starting to make the charge, Illipel will immediately cast Fairy Fire on Jalen. Okay. Hell yeah. Jalen will attempt a dexterity save. Eight plus zero is not gonna do it. Ain't doing it. And then we'll say, now, make your strike. You can do it. And Bardic Inspiration to Alwyn. Hell yeah. Okay. There is a lair action on initiative count 20. 
the outermost circle on the floor. A lights. Can everyone make me a wisdom save? 19. 9. That's a 15 for Alan. Illipel is the only one of you Holy shit. who does not feel pacified by this circle of pacification. I can't use the bardic, can I? You could. <laughs> Plus 5. Dirty 20. Clark, you're pacified. Yep. I did say it was going to be the last bad roll of the campaign. Jimmy, use your luck. Why did you take luck? Like- saving these luck points for attacks. Okay. Because all my attacks are going to miss if I don't do that. So. Alwyn, you're up. Fuck yeah, let's go. I close the distance, and I'm going to swing. Okay. Oh, that was so close to a crit. That's a 19 plus mod. Yeah. And with the gavel, we've got 12 bludgeoning and 4. 12 and 4. On the first swing. And on the second, 16 to hit. Does not hit. That's my turn. Okay. This stern Vidalkin looks down at you. And has to make a con save, please. Yep, he does. Nat one. Seven necrotic damage. Okay. They fall into this gruff staring contest. You insist I prove my physical superiority to you as well, then fine. And he is going to swing his longsword at you from astride his mount. Does a 16 hit? Yep. Okay. He strikes you. He's going to expend a second level spell slot for a smite. Of course. And you take 13 points of slashing damage. Okay. And? And pretty low, 7 points of radiant damage. And then as a bonus action, okay. he is going to cast Command on you. Yeah, that tracks. Using his Embodiment of Law ability sounds familiar. Order Domain Cleric. He commands you to kneel before me and submit. Make me a wisdom save. You got it. Nat 20. We both know I won't do that. Clark, you're up. I'm gonna hide behind one of the pillars. Go ahead and make a stealth check. Great. Best roll of the game so far. 17. (laughs) Naturally. And at the end of your turn, make me another wisdom save, please. There. Let's use this one. (laughs) Ah, Good. That's an 18 on my wisdom save. Okay, you shake off the pacification effect. Thank fuck. All right, the griffin is right in your face. Andy, it's going to take a bite. 23 to hit. Definitely hits. <laughs> 10 points of piercing damage. I cannot tank this for long. Okay. And it rakes at you with a claw, but 12 does not hit. Misses. Okay, then it ascends into the air. Illipel, we're back to you. All right, in that case, I'm going to use Cloud of Daggers on them since they're up in the air and probably not going to be easy to hit by anybody else. Oh, very clever. All right, and then on initiative count 20, the triangle lights up. Mm -hmm. Everyone make an intelligence save. 15. Probably not going to be good. 13. Four. <laughs> Jimmy, how? I'm rolling six how? different D20s. I literally rolled a different one. <laughs> like, Start rolling the same one. Eventually, it's got to turn around. All of you oh, God. are silenced. Great. Oh, great. As this triangle of cessation alights. Yeah, that's right. Let's see what I can do here. That means no V spells. No V spells. Oh, shit. That's all. <laughs> Alwyn, we are over to you. How high up are they? 15 feet. The dome is only 20 feet high. Cool. Ice knife don't need no words to cast. I'm going to whip an ice knife at him. Okay. Which one are you targeting? I'm going to target Jalen. Okay. To hit, that's a 17. Are you rolling with advantage? He is fairy fire. Oh, that's right. Um, Still 17. That will unfortunately deflect off of his armor. Okay. They both make a dex save. Jalen rolled a 2. Okay. The griffin rolled a 17. Okay. Griffin saves. Jalen takes... 12 cold damage. Wow, that still does damage even if the attack misses. Yup. Cool. I sense a good-ass spell. All right, I begin to back away from Jalen. At the end of your turn, make an intelligence save. <laughs> Not going to do it. That's only a 10. Okay, yeah, you're still silenced. Cool. Clork. Clork has one spell that... Doesn't require verbal components. That's right, and it's friends, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess... <laughs> Clark's going to throw a wrench. Nah, Clark's going to take out his crossbow and shoot Jalen. Yeah, he's not. 
a nine to hit. You do have advantage. You're right. I do. All right. Yep. That's an 18 to hit. Stinks <laughs> off his armor. Make an intelligence save on the end of your turn. Ah, good. Hey, that's a dirty 20. Okay. You are no longer silenced. Fuck yeah. Clork says loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now it is... I think I skipped Jalen's turn. Oh, well, that's fine. He's going to go now. 44 damage to Jalen and the Griffin. Right. Yeah, go ahead and roll them. Ten piercing damage. Yeah, Jalen's going to fly right down over to you. He's not fond of that. And he's going to take a swing at you. 20-something to hit. Yes. He's going to spend another second-level spell slot to add a Divine Smite to this. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're going to take 11 slashing damage and 16 radiant damage. And could you make me a concentration check on your fairy fire, please? Uh, it's a 16 to the fairy fire concentration. Okay, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, Elipel is looking severely hurt. And then as a bonus action, using the embodiment of law, he's going to cast Hold Person on Alwyn. Okay. Stay where you are in the name of the law! What kind of save is that? Wisdom. Cool. That's a 19. Very narrowly passing that save. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Okay. And the griffin is going to convey Jalen back into the air. And, you know, no, it's going to attack first. I'm being too nice. Yeah, you're definitely being too nice, yeah. Whole fucking party silence, almost dead. It's definitely a kindness, thank you. <laughs> Illipel, 14 doesn't hit you, right? No. Okay. <laughs> not. But uh, 16 does. No, it ties with my AC. Yes, so it hits you. So the bite is going to hit you for 11 points of piercing. All right, yeah. Your charity has knocked me unconscious. Thank you. Okay, and the Griven is going to convey Jalen back into the air. You still have a chance to surrender. Back to the top. Illipel, death saving throw, please. What is that roll again? Just flat d20. Okay, yeah, I got a 13. Okay, you pass one death saving throw. And Illipel, also make me an intelligence save. That's a d12. That's not correct. Oh, 19 on the dice, plus 120, dirty 20. Okay. If you awaken, you will not be silenced. Tremendous. If you awaken. Mm -hmm. On initiative 20, everyone make a wisdom save as the third circle, the circle of injunction, activates. Does that include me? A couple fucking knocks from the grave? Yes. Okay, great. All right. 18. Okay, you pass. Nine. 16. Okay, Clork and Alwyn, you are slowed, as by the spell slow. Shit. Oh, these are brutal. Okay. Alwyn, it's your turn. Yeah, and I'm still silenced. With slow, do I have enough movement to get to Illipel or not? You would have half your movement, but I think that would still be sufficient. Okay, and Jalen's up in the air now? Yes, Jalen's up in the air. Great. I'm going to go over and use a healing potion on Illipel. Okay, very good. <sighs> Illipel, you heal for six. You regain consciousness with six hit points, Illipel. And because I'm slowed, that's my turn. Make a, an intelligence and a wisdom save on the end of your turn. Do the int first. That's a nat 20. You are no longer silenced. And here's the wisdom. A 21. And you are no longer slowed. I just turn up to Jalen and say, This isn't going to be our end, Jalen. I am done with these games. To the detention realm with you! And he is going to cast... Banishment at fifth level. Alwyn and Clork, could you both make me charisma saving throws? Didn't he already take his turn? Last time I skipped his turn. This is him in his proper place in the initiative order. That's a 21. You pass. A flat 19. Well, there goes his fifth level spell for nothing. Good. Where were we going? These lair actions are brutal. Yeah. Fucking get out of our face. I'm sorry. This is a final boss fight. Did you want it to be easy? Anyway, he attempts to banish you and fails. I just hold the same expression I had when last I spoke the whole time. Clark, your turn. All right. How high up is he? 15 feet. Yeah. It's a lightning lore. I'm going to pull him down. Okay. Love that. Strength save. Well, it's, I guess it's the griffin. Strength save on the griffin. Wait, if you use it on him, you might be able to pull him off the griffin. Love that even more. Hold on. Is that okay? Does it work that way? Yeah, that seems cool. I don't like that idea. That's clever. Yeah, all right. Yeah, then let's... Don't ask Scal if that's okay. Scal is putting us through it. Pull that motherfucker off the griffin. Yeah, let's let's target Jalen. All right, Jalen's going to make a strength save. 
13 doesn't beat your DC, does it? 13 is my DC. No. No, it's 13, right? Because it's 8 plus your spell attack bonus. Okay. He remains confidently astride the griffin. Ugh. The griffin is going to fly down to you, Clark, after that little display. Oh, man. Uh, a bite, 22 to hit. Y- yeah. <laughs> For 9 points of piercing damage, a claw, 25 to hit. For... 14 points of slashing damage. Bad. (laughs) Shut up. Illipel, we're back to the top with you. Oh, and Clark, on the end of your turn, make me a wisdom save against the slow effect. I'm going to use the lock point. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. The D percent ready here. Yeah, so here's my first luck roll of the game. Should we talk about how luck works for Clark? Yeah, so I don't like the lucky feat. It's very powerful. So I wanted to give it some sort of crazy is it drawback. Jimmy was having Jimmy has been having such terrible luck. Has present tense. <laughs> has such terrible luck. Yeah, that's a trait Jimmy has as a person. <laughs> so I came up with a whole table of fun crazy effects that when an is it engineer uses their luck, some wacky side effects happens. So when Clark uses luck, they're going to roll on a D% percent chart and we'll consult it and see what happens. Okay, so I hope that the effect is good because I don't think a 14 is enough to break this slow. No, it is not. I'm going to roll. Let's see what happens here. All right, let's see what happens. Are some of them good? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them are good, actually. Would it be fair to say half of them? Yeah. Maybe your luck only kicks in when it's uh, like a 1 in 100 odds. I mean, my luck's pretty good when it's any die. Well, that's not true. <laughs> No, Jimmy, your luck is bad. A bad on every type of die. Started this session with one lightning damage. Here we go. Wait a minute. For a second, I thought I rolled 100, but I rolled 90. You rolled 90. Okay, 90 on this table. Ah, this is Gravitic Punch. You use your luck and it manifests in this crazy side effect. Your hands become much heavier, but you feel like you can channel this energy as these gravitons gather around your fists for the next minute. You can make unarmed strikes using your spell attack bonus. These strikes deal 1d6 plus your charisma modifier force damage. You can punch the target you didn't rest from the sky (laughs) when it decides to come down. It's it's right in your face. Right. That's right, it came down and dealt a bunch of damage. Perfect. Illipel, it is your turn. And I got rid of my silence. Yes. Right. I was like, I don't want to do it in my next turn. That is correct. I am going to use Healing Word at second level. Very good. Okay, cool. I heal for 11. Much needed health. Okay. Anything else from you, Elapel? I will go into proximity of the Griffin to provide Alwyn with a flanking bonus, if that's applicable. Okay. Okie dokie. I will make an attack. Okay. Okay. An 18. Who are you attacking? I was going to say Jalen. Okay, yeah. That won't hit Jalen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. On initiative count 20, everyone make me your choice of a strength or dexterity saving throw. (laughs) That's a nine dex save. 17. Dex. Eight. Okay. Illipel and Alwyn, you are both restrained as from this innermost triangle, manacles of light fly out and bind you in their luminous grasp. I'm sorry, that should have been minus two to dexterity saving throws under the effects of slow. So 15. All of you are restrained by this triangle of detention. Alwyn, it is your turn. Well, I'm not really next to them, because I was over by where Illipel was. You were over by where Illipel was. In that case, I will throw up bonus action and healing spirit to where Clork and Illipel currently are. And for my action, I will use an action to consume a healing potion. Okay. I heal eight. All right. And you can make a strength or dex saving throw at the end of your turn. Yep. It's only a 13. Okay, you are still restrained. Now it is Jalen's turn. Jalen is going to cast Azor's Resilient Sphere on you, Illipel. Can you make me a dexterity saving throw? Yeah, I can. And I did. And it was nat one. (laughs) Okay, a bubble of force materializes around you and contains you. You will remain where you are. Ah, the restraint wasn't enough. Redundancy has its value. 
The goblin could tell you that. Redundancy has its value. <laughs> <laughs> now I will deal with the rest of you. And blue man is great. Said no one ever. That is Jalen's turn. Clark, we're over to you. Okay. This thing's still in my face? Yeah. Can I reach him with an unarmed strike? Yeah, they're sort of sharing the same spaces. I'm going to punch him with my magical hands. Yes! Here we go. That's a dirty 20. Exactly hits his AC. Oh my god. That's five force damage. Okay. Right on the chin. (laughs) Right on the chin with these gravitic fists. Jalen looking a little battered at this point. A little battered. Right. Wisdom and your choice of strength or dex saves. Okay. Oh, and he needs to make a concentration check on the resilience sphere. He does maintain concentration. Hold on, what am I doing here? I was about to use a luck point because I didn't like that roll. Okay. So here goes another attempt at that wisdom saving throw for slow. And that is a natural 19 plus zero. Passes. All right. You are no longer slowed. Good God. Nice. Thank fuck. Do roll on this table for me. Okay. See what happens here. Is there like an instant death? No, there shouldn't be. There's evil chlorine. There shouldn't be. There shouldn't, there shouldn't be. be. I'm right, getting higher here. Uh, oh my god, no. Uh-oh. Well, wait, this could be really good, actually. What did you roll? This is a 97. 97. Oh my god, is that the one? That's the one. Oh what my god. It? Your hit point total becomes the total level of all your unspent spell slots. Jesus. And your hit points become the total level of your spell sl- Which Should that be reversed? The hit points and spell slots swap values. Yeah, your hit points and spell slots swap. Okay, here we go. Of course I would roll badly on this table. This is great. Okay. I don't know. You're getting a lot of spell slots now. I already had spell slots that I haven't been able to use. (laughs) All right. So my HP is now nine. Okay. And I have 12 levels of spell slots. So can I just call that six second level spell slots? You can. Wow. Nice. All right. You now have six second level spell slots. Okay. And make me your choice of a strength or dexterity save. Right. And don't worry, you'll get to use the spells after the next layer action. Charms, fears, sleeps, poisons, and maims us. <laughs> yep. Right. Exactly. The rhombus appears on the ground. <laughs> Fuck your rhombus. Turns out there's another circle and triangle inside of those circles. Okay. So this is a dex save because I'm not slow anymore. Yep. And that's a seven. You're still restrained. And I'm not going to use more luck. <laughs> okay. The griffin is going to fly over to Alwyn. 21 to hit. With the bites, for sure. Ten points of piercing damage. This yeah. Griffin's fucking busted. <laughs> Thirty-eight to hit. I'm actually rolling pretty well tonight. Yeah. Uncharacteristically, twenty-four to hit. That hits. For eight points of slashing. Very good. And now it is back to the top of the order. Illipel, we go to you. You are restrained. Right. All right. I will. I guess. All right, I'm in the sphere. Can I even fucking do anything? No, you're right. You're in the Azor's Resilient Sphere. You can't do anything. We're fucked. Great. Can I drink a fucking potion in here at least? I mean, that's that's contained, right? Okay. Yeah, you can drink a fucking potion in the Resilient Sphere. Okay, cool. Excellent. And that's eight. Okay, you recover eight hit points. Clark, I forgot on your turn you would have received some healing. Oh, good. You get eight health back. Thanks, pal. Okay, on initiative count 20, could someone roll me a D3, please? It's a one. A one. Let's see who I have listed first here. Okay. Andy, do you still have Lana's stat block around? Yeah. Yeah. She comes in from below, and she joins this initiative if you'd like to roll her in. Jesus. Okay. Thank fuck. Burned all her spell slots. <laughs> but thank fuck. I'll take it. She got a nat 20. Okay. Total of 24. So she goes now on initiative count 20. Okay. Well, she would walk in and see Alwyn has one hit point left. <laughs> so she's going to go ahead and... Yeah, I honestly didn't know how we were getting out of this one, boys. But uh, she's going to go ahead and use a third level. If she can get up to Alwyn, use the third level cure wounds. Yeah, sure. You can say no. <laughs> Deciding whether Jalen would determine this worthy of a counter spell. He does not. Of course he has fucking counterspell too, because apparently we're going for all of the blue tricks with this fight. Time warp. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> cool. I heal for 16, and that is her turn. Okay. Alwyn, it's your turn. <sighs> Just in time. And now that the Griffin and Jalen are in front of me, I'm going to swing at Jalen. Mm. 
I don't think that hits. That's a 19. Very close, but at the last moment, he manages to deflect your blow with his shield. That is not going to hit either on the same hit. Okay. And now it's Jalen's turn. Going to swing a sword at you, Alwyn. Okay. Is going to get a nat one and not do anything. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. Bonus action is going to cast Command on Lana. Mm. If she could make me a wisdom save. 13. That will not succeed. Jalen commands Lana to grovel under city filth. And now it is Clark's turn. All right. Clark, not slowed anymore. Still restrained, but uh, it's okay. Clark is going to hurl a second level chaos bolt directly at Jalen. Nice. Here it goes. And also, I'm going to use my third luck coin. All right. <laughs> 19's not gonna hit. Do you have, like, bardic inspiration or something kicking around? (laughs) I don't. So, what's gonna happen here is... I'm gonna roll on this luck table for the third time in this game. Okay. And we're gonna see what's gonna happen there. 51. You cast Dragon's Breath on yourself. Nice! You cannot choose to voluntarily end their ongoing effects. And it doesn't require concentration, either. Right. So that just happens now? Yeah. You just now have Dragon's Breath cast on yourself. Use that before. All right, so Dragon's Breath is active. I'm not doing anything about it right now. And I'm going to expend two sorcery points, and I'm going to try that second level Chaos Bolt again. This has to be a 15 or higher. Not feeling it, man. It's a 17. Yes! All right. 22 to hit. 22 absolutely hits. All right. All right, here we go. So I start stirring these colors in the air, and this Chaos Bolt, that's up really shitty roll. Oh, wait. I did roll double twos on the D8. Okay. So, that is gonna be 11 cold damage on Jalen. Okay. Nice. And then it'll leap to the griffin, which is a new attack roll. Correct. 16? Yeah, that's the griffin's AC. Alright, great. (laughs) And that's a great roll. 26 thunder damage. Holy There There we go. There it is. Love that. Would Jalen make a... Jalen does make a concentration check. On my bubble bullshit. Okay, yeah, he does pass his concentration check. Clark, are you under the effect of any more of the... Just restrained. Restrained. All right, so make a strength or dex save at the end of your turn. 13 dex. Does not pass. The griffin is up now, is going to wail on Lana a bit. 11 misses, 19 hits. So she's going to take... Eight points of slashing damage. Did she lose any health before coming to join us? She probably would have on average. Let me roll some dice and determine how many hit points she's down. So she would be down another 10 hit points. Okay. Okay, that was the griffin. Illipel, you're in a bubble. Yeah, I will stay in the bubble. I'm sorry, obviously I'll stay in the bubble. (laughs) I won't cast a healing spell on myself while in the bubble. Okay. It is Lana's turn. She is going to fall prone during her turn. On initiative count 20, nothing happens. Alwyn, you're up. Okay. They're still right in front of me. I'm going to attack Jalen. Try and break his concentration. Miss on the first one. And miss on the second Okay. Are you still affected by any of the shapes? I am still restrained. Okay, so you can make a strength or dex save. And that's a 21. Okay, you are no longer restrained. Jalen's turn. Jalen's like out of spell slots. Oh, that pity. You really, you know, you, you feel feel for the guy. Yeah, I'm coming around on Jalen. Starting to like him. Yeah, hand to mouth like Alwyn is not. Starting to root for him. Against us. <laughs> Alwyn, Alwyn's made up his mind. Not a fan. Yeah, just going to attack Lana on the ground. 26 to hit. And is going to burn a first level spell slot to Divine Smite. So she takes 6 points of slashing damage and another 10 points of radiant damage. That's going to be it for Jalen. Clork. That was fast. You know, I'm going to use the Dragon's Breath. All right. So that's a dex save from both of them. Correct. The Griffin got a natural 20. Let's see how Jalen does. Jalen got a natural 6. That's great. And he doesn't add seven no dex zero okay (laughs) that's good so that's gonna be hey that's a great roll that's 16 lightning damage on jalen oh dang okay jalen looking 
pretty ragged. The griffin saved, right? It still takes half. Okay, so it takes eight points. And please, please fail a concentration check for me. I mean, make... Concentration check, right. The concentration check is successful. Ugh. I'm still going to quicken another one of these second level chaos bolts. I got spell slots to burn. End it. And those are the last of my sorcery points. points. You can do it, Gluck. Here we go. 21 to hit. That is one higher than Jalen's AC. Come on, Clork. Here it goes. Pretty good. You want to go acid or poison? Probably both are fine. It's going to be 11 acid damage. Fail a concentration check. Concentration check, yes, yes. 16 plus 3. He passes. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to make a check to get unrestrained. That's a natural one. Of course it is. You are still restrained. <laughs> Your, your face looked so thrilled, and I'm like, oh my god, it's a natural 20, and one. Nope. I'm happy that I'm rolling well on the rolls that matter now at this point. Yeah, that's fair. Clark but... doesn't need to move anymore. Clark's done his job. Yeah, honestly. Okay, Griffin's turn. Griffin's gonna make one attack against Lana, which will miss with a 14, and one attack against Alwyn. will hit with a 23. Yeah. For 10 points of slashing damage. Okay. Back to single digits I go. It's better than a single point. Back to the top of the order. Illipel, you're in the bubble. There's this Eiffel 65 song called Living in a Bubble. I won't sing it, but uh, I'm not going to do anything on my turn. What kind of bard are you? The one that's not allowed to sing copyrighted content. There it is. Yeah. Uh, Fair enough. Lana's up. She's going to get up. She's going to flank with Alwyn. And she's going to make two claw attacks on Jalen. Okay. First one is not a 20, only a 16 misses. Okay. Second one is not a 20 either, but it is a 22. (laughs) Love that. Oh, yeah, that'll hit. And that is going to be 18 slashing damage. Jalen looking very hurt at the moment. Alwyn, your turn. After you make a concentration check. Oh, right, concentration check. Thank you. I feel like I'm being a dick by a minute, but I'm like, I'm not letting it go. No, no, no not at all. perfect. Because he's going to pass That's again. That's a five. Oh, good. He Get the fails. fuck out of there. The resilient sphere pops, and you're no longer confined by it. Thank fuck. Thank you literal <laughs> fuck. Alwyn, it's your turn. Alwyn is going to look up at Jalen, spit on the ground, keep swinging. Okay. That is a dirty 20. Yeah, that's his AC. Okay. With the gavel, that's going to be 10 magical bludgeoning and 4 necrotic. Okay. What sort of flourish would you like to add? No, shut up. Oh, thank God. (laughs) Fucking thank God. (laughs) After spitting on the ground, Alwyn coldly looks up towards Jalen. Didn't have to be this way. You think you serve justice and law and order. You're just a tool for evil, just like the rest of them. And with a single swing of the gavel swirling with spectral, shadowy, necrotic energy, swings into Jalen and knocks him off the griffin. Fantastic. As Jalen falls to the ground, you all hear a voice cry out, Enough! Enough chaos has come of all of this! And the floor beneath you, all of the symbols, begin to glow brighter and brighter until the room is filled with this radiant light and you are suddenly no longer standing atop the spire of the sentries, but in a different location. In an underground chamber, its ancient walls tiled with a detailed mosaic showing a sphinx forging peace and order out of chaos. There are glyphs on the walls in archaic forms of draconic, celestial, and other exotic languages that none of you understand. In the center of the chamber stands a massive sarcophagus, its lid adorned with a golden sculpture of the same sphinx, and on the far wall rests an octagonal stone inlaid with a circle of interlocking golden mechanisms containing an undulating triangle of pure white light. A sphinx rests at its base. She rises and pads towards you, spreading her eagle wings and surveying you with her wrinkled face beneath a mane of silver hair. You may have my confession. I, Metakaya, on behalf of the Rujava, arranged to have this relic stolen from the Guild Pact. 
I willingly accept whatever punishment my actions have earned me, but I will not have my oldest friend's soul be poked and prodded to serve that dragon's curiosity. I will die before I allow it. Wait, what? Your oldest friend's soul? Did you really not know? Clark looks back with just an absolutely bewildered expression. All the trouble. Your champion. Your army. And now you're just giving up. If I were to continue to attempt to subdue your efforts, look at what has already occurred. A whole block is in disarray because of your actions. No, because of my actions, my lack of foresight. I thought she looks back at the disc resting on the far wall and hangs her head. I thought it was the right thing to do. When I saw your sigil light up the sky on the night of the invasion, I thought for certain that you had returned after so many years to be our savior. Azor, what has become of you? So player knows who that is, but can I roll religion or history? Any of you can roll history. That's a 11 history. 15 for Illipel. I don't have dice in front of me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <It's all right. laughs> I just realized. That's a Jeppy move. That's a Jeppy move. That's a Jeppy move. Finally got Jimmy with a Jeppy move. You love to see it. I love to see it. How the mighty has fallen. You know what? I, I don't even think I need dice for this. Uh, Let's call it a six. Hold on. I'll, I'll roll. You got a 15 on the dice, Jimmy. What's your mod? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> you literally did. I mod is zero. <laughs> Jimmy's already doing better than the entire campaign's worth of course rolls. You just got to get somebody else to roll dice for you, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all of you know the story of Azor, the Supreme Judge Azor I, who came from another world and forged the Guild Pact over 10,000 years ago. The first Parun of the Azorius Senate. This is a titanic, almost godlike figure, especially among the Azorius Senate. So then why work against the interests of the pact? I am the executor of Azor's will. In the event of his death, which I can only assume is the case due to his soul being fragmented so, I am to ensure, among other things, that what remains of him is laid to rest here. I look down to Clork. Did... did Raoul know? Did anyone know? Raoul knew something. He, uh... I was a little cagey about it. Wouldn't tell me everything he knows. I don't know. As you all are saying this, you actually hear a hum of electricity. I draw my weapons. You hear a hum of electricity crackling behind you. It grows louder. You turn behind you and you see a sort of growing ball of electricity. It crackles and then collapses on itself. And with a loud zap, you see a familiar figure appear. A bronze-scaled Vyashino, power coil, walking stick in hand, many lenses hanging over the eye. Wait a minute. Hello, Vim. Oh, Vim. Vim. I know many things. This is a revelation even to me. How did you get in here? Medakaya noticing this. <sighs> How long have we known each other? Eleven millennia? Must you really adopt that form? In this minute chamber, positively. No. Yes, my minions. Thank you for leading me exactly where I needed to be. Wait, are you fucking kidding me? How did I not see this? <laughs> Andy is six feet away from the microphone right now. Yeah, walk outside and react that way. <laughs> it did fucking good, Jeppy. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I smoke billowing from his fucking computer. <laughs> Uh, what's going on here? Who- who are you? Cloak, you usually bow. Wait, what? I only bow to- Oh. Is it true? Your deductive skills are perhaps less sharp than I at first ascertained, Mr. Clork. Well. But no matter, there is always room for growth. Clork immediately hits the ground. You may rise. You have done well, my minions. So, Guild's Pact, you have finally come, but you will not relieve the Azorius of this relic. 
not even your power as the Guild Pact can override a soul's inviolable right to be laid to rest in a manner of its choosing. Alwyn immediately flashes back to the conflict the party had with Gullival and some similar words that the Combine subscribed to. Illipel will look to Medikaya. All of this to merely honor the dead. How archaic are your ways? And for what? Illipel will look down at their mangled, cut-up hand. You know times change, right? Perhaps. But oaths and contracts and laws must be abided by. And as such, if you were to remove this soul from this place, it would transgress an inviolable right and nullify your bond with the Guild Pact. Ah. Vim, Niv, Mizzet strokes his chin a bit. This explains several things. If Azor's soul is truly contained within the relic, primarily, it explains the potency of its binding magic. But it also solves something of another mystery. Medikaya, what if I were to prove to you that Azor is not dead? You, you really expect me to believe such a thing? Indeed, since I adopted the mantle of Guild Pact, I have felt a tether on a creature beyond my perception, with a similar arcane resonance to that object. I can feel the Guild Pact binding him in a sentence to be served in eternal solitude. Impossible! Azor is the pure embodiment of law and order. He could not possibly be found guilty of a crime. The crime in question is tyranny and despotism. Not entirely incompatible with law and order. But as Guild Pact, I could commute that sentence. I would need to verify it. Now, those who follow me, the others of the Rucherva, will need to verify it. I am not uncivilized, groveling in the dirt. I have committed a crime. I have been found guilty. I shall accept the punishment. Very interesting for someone who speaks so highly of law and order. She would never acknowledge the contradictions that she has been found in the middle of. But she glares daggers at you and then hangs her head in shame. Owen turns to Vim. How is it? All this time, you led us on this quest when you already knew the answer we would find. Why? Clark kind of elbows Alwyn and says, Don't question the fire mind. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so good. Alwyn does not flinch. You are bold, little scavenger. But to be honest, and Mr. Clark knows this, the end was not entirely my end. We shall discuss this more in private, but this endeavor has been something of a experiment to observe the efficacy with which disparate Ravnikans may cooperate to solve a complex problem. Now, I could not have solved this problem on my own. I did indeed require your aid. I did not know the end that you would arrive at Though I had my suspicions. And what of her? Well, as the Living Guild Pact, I must see to her punishment. But as I see it, you are the ones who have suffered and struggled most as a result of her ill-considered actions. What sentence would you have me pronounce upon her? Death. Look, <laughs> it's more complicated than that, isn't it? And I look back at Medikaya when I say that. She again hangs her head low. If death is truly what you believe I have earned, then I accept it. I have devoted my thousands of years of life in obligation and service to the law. And if the law pronounces that my head will satisfy it, then I offer my neck gladly. I didn't expect that. She has an affinity for honoring the dead. Looking back to quote-unquote Vim, Illipel will say, Is there not something we can do to put Medikaya to work in a place she so dearly loves? Uh, I certainly did not expect the gamut of punishments to run from death to community service. 
deliberate on the matter for as long as you require. I only have a city to run. Then perhaps death will do. (laughs) I mean... After all, Metakaya saw to it to destroy blocks upon blocks of our city. We should get back to building it and be done with this. Are you actually leaving this choice up to us? As I see it, all of your struggle and your suffering has come as a result of this initial transgression. And while I would be loath to put an ancient creature with such wisdom to death, it is upon your recommendation that I shall take whatever course of action you deem. What would you do if you were us for your mind? I elbow Alwyn again. He'd ask us what we'd do. (laughs) (laughs) Clark and I just asked him what he would do if he was us. Uh, five-head Clark returns. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Niv Mizzet again strokes his polymorphed Viashino chin. I believe I could concoct a suitably ironic punishment. All of this was done for Azor, and Azor is currently serving an eternity of banishment upon a forgotten island. Such a thing could be replicated for Medikaya here. Uh, looking to Alwyn, Illipel will say, I think that is a certain charm to it. Would you agree? No, Illipel. You know how I feel about charm. So death, then? I'm honestly really conflicted. I I don't know... <laughs> mm. I know the lore implications of this, though. But what does Alwyn... Right. Yeah, what does Alwyn want to do? It's about Alwyn. We all know death isn't the end of anything in this city. That doesn't mean anything. Banishment. That's a harsher punishment. Then we're all in agreement. Mr. Clark, are you still bloodthirsty? I may have been a little hasty. It is a quality of the goblins that I have found ever admirable. Clark is starstruck. (laughs) (laughs) I I actually saw it it in your eyes. It was great. (laughs) Then it is agreed. You feel a different sort of power now when niv speaks. You can feel the whole chamber that you're in, this tomb. All of the air permeating it rings with this magical energy as he speaks as Living Guild Pact. And you can see on his skin a scrawl of ancient runes are now covering every part of him. As Living Guild Pact, Metakaya... I condemn you to eternal exile within a detention void. Be gone, and trouble this world no more with your arrogance. He waves a hand, and as he speaks this, the magic fades from the room. This feeling of great pressure dissipates, and Medikaya is gone. (sighs) Come with me, minions. We have one more thing to discuss. And again, you hear this crackling of electricity. This ball of lightning expands around the room to encompass all of you. And with another flash, you are gone once more. And you emerge in what appears to be a enormous cavern, glittering with bronze and brass contraptions piled high in every corner. There are some scrolls and books in some sections and various measures and other devices in another section, but mostly just loose widgets and sprockets and gadgets of all sort. (laughs) And as you emerge in this cavern, you now see Niv-Mizzet in his true form, that of an ancient dragon, gold-scaled, with a large blue-red frill around his neck. He lowers his head about twice as high as any of you stand and whispers, though this whisper echoes through the room, Allow me to commend you again, minions. Ah, I keep trying to break that habit, but it has been so long. Do forgive my lair being in absolute disarray. I didn't really have time to organize it when we moved from the Eyrie to below the Chamber of the Guild Pact. Alwyn would have, as we were sort of about to be teleported, looked back towards the sun disk. Did it come with us? No. Turning back as he speaks. What of the sun disk? Mm, Metakaya spoke the truth. If it was Azor's will that it be sealed in that tomb, then not even my edict can overwrite 
that will. Owen just sort of collapses in a heap on the ground and takes in this enormous scene. <sighs> what about the uh, other use of the sun disk? You know, the etheric lock. So long as it remains in Azor's tomb, I do not believe anyone will be able to activate it. That place was well warded, and if you had not been brought there, I may never have found it. That's great. Glad to be of service. But a problem still remains. A problem that I hope my adept... My adept assistants that you will be able to address. Oh my god. Niv Nizit just called me his assistant. That he did. Anything. Anything. Let us have a discussion then. A weighty discussion on the past and future of Ravnica. But first, a question. If the arresters you fought today, or the legionnaires of the Boros, were to go into the streets unarmed and unarmored, how well do you believe they would fare in executing their office and maintaining the law? Those chumps? Not too good. Correct, Mr. Clark. Laws require a threat of violence to legitimize them. Laws are just threats! <laughs> <laughs> the Guild Pact is an ancient and powerful law that binds an entire plane of existence. So let me posit to you another question. What sort of threat of violence do you believe would be required for its enforcement? Well, I look to Alan and Illabel. You're talking about the destruction of Ravnica itself, aren't you? Nizmizit sighs. The blast from his nostrils shudders against you. Some years ago, when we ran the implicit maze, when every guild chose a champion and Jace ascended to the office of Living Guild Pact, we came within a hair's breadth of seeing such magic unfold. The supreme verdict of Azor, the final fail mechanism, if the Guild Pact were to be completely undone, a spell of such destructive power that it would wipe all of the guilty from the face of this world. But it would not simply affect the guilty. The guilty and the innocent alike would be destroyed. How are we to progress and advance as a society under such a hanging axe? Many innocent lives are sacrificed all the time in the interest of progress. I don't think that's quite the same, Clark. There's a difference between sacrifice and literal Armageddon. And what part do you suggest we play in all of this? Your investigative skills have exceeded my expectations. I know now that it is Azor who is bound beyond my sight. But I was not the one who did it, which logically can only mean that it was accomplished by my predecessor. Jace? Yes? Do we know where he is? Hasn't been seen in a while. Hmm. So, looming threats of destruction from some far-off prison are trying to rewrite an unbreakable, world-altering law. Precisely, Master Greenwolf. But we should begin with the first and only clue I have to this mystery. When my predecessor returns to this world, question him. Discover where he bound Azor. He's not the Guild Pact anymore. You are. Why can't you do it yourself? Because I am not a planeswalker. And the former living Guild Pact is. Whatever he did, I suspect he did it on another world. Well, what if he never comes back? I hope that will not be the case. But what I have gathered, he is scheduled to appear in a hearing before the Azorius Senate on those of his kind in several months' time. If he does not return for that, I shall send Master Zarek to go and fetch him. I would ask you to question Master Bellerin. See what you can find about Azor. I suspect there are layers to this problem. And until then... I expect your guilds will have use of you. I am sure they will. However, there is a matter of an agreement 
that I'm sure each of us signed before taking on this work. I trust that to be honored. If you refer to your contract with Tomek, I expect he shall meet with you presently to resolve it. Very well. Here is the design that I should like you to play some small role in. We shall find Azor. We shall coax him or drag him back to this world. And we shall have him unmake what he made. Ravnica has progressed beyond the need for a guild pact. Then what'll happen to you? That remains to be seen. It should be a riveting experiment. I shall determine whether I can stay alive. I have proven very difficult to kill thus far. Well, uh, Elipo will look to themselves and the party. Your last experiment proved quite fruitful. I wish you the best of luck. Before I dismiss you, I feel I should properly reward you for your services. He reaches behind him into this pile of doodads and what's it. <laughs> he pulls out a small... Well, it's minuscule relative to his massive size, but it's probably a couple feet of metal. And with a claw, he precisely trisects it and places a small ingot before each of you. Mr. Clark, I trust you know what this is. I smell it. It smells like Mizium. No. Mizium? You have each performed well. You may present these ingots to my other min- mm, former associates within Nivix, and I'm sure they shall develop some fantastical contraptions to reward you for your exquisite efforts. You can use this to design a magic item, basically. You can also use it to get any of the normal Mizium book stuff. So, Mizium armor, or a Mizium apparatus, or a Mizium mortar, a flame throwing device. You may redeem this for any one of those three items, or discuss with me a item of your own devising, if and when we return to Ravnica. Forgive me for your mind. I have seen your power be used to tremendous and terrible effect. I have no need for trinkets, but my friend here has lost something very dear to them that I wish to see restored. Uh, the fingers? Uh, I could probably do that. Or you could use that Mizium ingot to have my engineers create a... Magical prosthetic? I assure you it will be several percentage points, if not entire orders of magnitude more efficient than those fleshy things you had before. Forgive me, not the fingers. And perhaps this would be a matter that you would be, should be, informed of fully. We had a run-in with some very powerful memory magic, and Illipel has lost a great deal of the memory of the last two weeks. I see. He raises a claw towards your forehead, Illipel. May I? Absolutely. Okay. There's a powerful vibration of magical energy filling the room as a blue light springs into existence between the claw and your forehead, and as it closes his eyes, Illipel, you feel a rush of fragmented memories come back to you. You remember... Seeing an Eternal in a kitchen in the Undercity, you remember resting outside a campfire in the 4th Precinct with your compatriots. You remember scratching a forged letter in a dark cavern in the Undercity. Bits and pieces come back to you, but not the whole thing. And after a moment, niv puts his claw down and says, I apologize. I cannot mend this. Cassiel's memories were encrypted, but these are eviscerated, torn to shreds. You are fortunate that most of your mind remains intact, but I shall do what is in my power to ascertain any other information about how this came to happen. I appreciate your efforts, Guilt Pact. For what it's worth, I feel at peace with what I've forgotten. And I would agree. I think now is the time for vengeance. Saying that, Illipel will look down at the ingot, which would be much easier with both of my hands. Nice. All right. With 
this managed niv it waves a claw, and you all are dismissed from his lair. You find yourselves standing in the Chamber of the Guild Pact, multicolored light pouring in through the stained glass windows. You stand right at the base of the crystalline sculpture of niv stabbing Nicol Bolas with Hazaret's spear. Damn. <laughs> Fuck. Looking at this statue, Illipel will say, there's a part of me that despises the Guild Pact. I put a hand on Clark's shoulder as, as he <laughs> tries to fucking murder Illipel for saying that. Let me at him! Let me at him! <laughs> Illipel will see Clark react and steady Clark with a hand and say, But I am also grateful. After all, I've met the two of you, and I think we've proven to each other and ourselves that we are capable, that we can accomplish great things. I will admit I am eager to return back to my life. But I do hope Jace pays us a visit soon. You really think it's going to take a planeswalker to get us back together again? Well, the Violet Rose is always open. In fact, for you two, free drinks for life. I sort of wink to Clork. I wink the hell yeah. Well, 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 there may be some fine print, but broadly speaking, the gesture remains. Of course, couldn't say it better myself. So, uh, what are you two going to be doing the rest of the day? Well, Ilpel just offered us drinks, didn't they? That's what I heard, and I'm off the clock now. We've all just had, well, probably the most harrowing fight we've ever been in. And there was a war a couple of months ago. (laughs) (laughs) I would agree. Fine. Come with me. Feel free to drink me out of house and home. (laughs) Gladly. We intend to. All right. The three of you make your way to the Violet Rose... Anyway, yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> Wait, that's that's full house. Oh shit, that's full house. You meant to do cheers. Yeah, I meant to do cheers. Sometimes you want to go. <laughs> that is great. Both are songs that we can't legally use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you head to the Violet Rose and spend the rest of your day battered and carved up as you may be. So tired. <laughs> enjoying your company and the many quality beverages chosen by Illipel's expert sommelier. Is it Bezel Gurch? <laughs> no, it's Revit. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I- I'll bet you that Bezel Gurch has, like, a brand. Probably. The Gurch label. Mm-hmm. There's probably some Bezel brand wine Yeah. at Illipel's Violet Rose. Probably. You spend the rest of the day laughing and drinking uh, Bezel Gurch's patented aged Silesian grape wine, and over the course of the next months and weeks, some notable events occur. I'm going to start with Clark. Clark, almost immediately after you return to work at Nivix, you are approached by your guildmaster. Mr. Clark, it would be a ridiculous waste of talent to have you return to what you were doing after all of your escapades. Please, come with me. Clark doesn't look up. He finishes what he's doing, fiddling with an orthogonal reflector module. (laughs) Oh, those are good. And then he sets down his tools and gets up, brushes himself off, and goes with Ral. As you ride a steam-powered elevator to the upper floors of Nivix, Ral says, I'll have something a little more complicated than orthogonal reflector modules for you to fiddle with. About time. The elevator stops. The doors slide open with a burst of pressurized air. And you step into a very well-appointed lab. All of the latest tools and measures and devices neatly arrayed on tables. You see a handful of other goblins hard at work on various pieces to a device that is being assembled in the center of the room. Welcome, Mr. Clark, to Project Etherwave. Sounds fancy. By seeing any of this, you are now sworn to secrecy. Clark does the Is It League sworn to secrecy salute. Non-disclosure agreement is now officially in effect. Gullifin, come over. Here, meet your newest engineer. Another goblin walks over, similarly dressed to you, work clothes, suspenders, rubber, non-conductive gloves and boots, face smeared with grease, big goggles on her face, she flips them up. Yeah, hey, I'm Chief Engineer Gullifin. Uh, You better pull your weight. We lost some of the engineers on lightning bugs, so you've got big shoes to fill. 
like literally big shoes or uh... I mean, you know, shoes of all practical sizes, but metaphorically big shoes. You know, the people who worked on Project Lightning Bug, the Interplanar Beacon. Oh, you're talking to, well, you're talking to Clark. Ralph looks at you and says, I see you will all get along great. Everyone here is everyone who's authorized to know anything about this device. Although you may see a woman pop in here time to time. Please don't be offended if she calls you a gremlin. They don't have goblins where she's from. Now it excuse me? And he says that and turns and heads back into the elevator. So, uh, what is it we do here? Yeah, so Lightning Bug sent a broad-spectrum etheric signal to all of the neighboring planes of existence. We are trying to create a tight-beam version of that same technology, something that can ping a signal to a specific place on a specific plane of existence and develop an interplanar communication network. That's fascinating. Yeah, get to work. There's anionic destabilizers that need calibrating. Chop, chop. Just who do you... Just who do I report to around here? Me, Chief Engineer Gullifin. I thought we established that in the previous conversation we had. I hope I don't have to keep explaining things to you every few minutes. No, no, no. Say no more. Totally understood. And Clark dutifully gets to work. All right. Cool. Amazing. Clark got a promotion. (laughs) I think. Yeah. 28 zibs an hour, this pays. 28 zibs mm, an hour. That's nice. Although you probably won't be getting hazard pay like you were on the previous job. Mm, it's a little cushy. Illipel, another fine day at the Violet Rose. Several weeks have passed. The Izzet engineers have finished constructing the prosthetic apparatus that straps onto your hand. You drum your new Mizium fingers against the desk, and you hear a knock at the window. Hmm. Illipel will tuck away whatever they were working on and turn around. Who do they see? You see at the window, Tomic Verona. Yep. Adorned with many scroll cases, his gargoyle standing dutifully behind him, tapping at your window. I will open the window and let them in. Tomek, it's good to see you again. Uh, pardon the unusual entrance. I have some other matters to attend to. The absence of the guildmaster has made things particularly busy for me. But I wanted to drop by and assure you that all of your affairs are now in order. Our experts at Viscopa Financial Services have rectified the tragic and regrettable issue of your thousand Zeno debt. That is relieving news, to be sure. What's more, the Violet Rose has been thriving of late. Yes, the additional funds we are collecting from that addendum you placed on our arrangement is also to my great benefit and pleasure. Yes, I could only imagine our arrangement has been more than fruitful for you. Sadly, however, I cannot say quite the same. Analgast continues to make moves in the Golgari, and what's worse, she too is thriving deep in the Undercity, some contemptuous hole in the wall known as the Wilted Petal. I understand your concern, Mr. Illipel. As a financial and legal advisor, The only advice I would hypothetically offer to you is to be vigilant and patient. The Syndicate is in something of a disarray. Many individuals are displeased with Kaya's leadership, and juggling all of these conflicting oligarchs is... It has put a lot upon my plate. Speaking of which, here is the relevant documentation that you would need. Hands you a scroll. It is notified, notarized but I very much must be going. Tosses it onto the floor, snaps his fingers. The gargoyle gets down on all fours, spreads its wings. He hops onto it and takes off into the sky. I will pick up the document and read it over at my desk. Anything of note there? Make for me an insight check. It's an eight. Hmm. You scan haphazardly over this contract, looking for the parts that are relevant to you. The Thousand Zeno debt has been waived. Your breach of contract has been struck from any black mark it might leave on your record as an advocate. And things seem in order. But you don't notice anything else hiding in the details. Okay. Looking over the document, Illipel will scoff. It's just not enough. It's not nearly enough. 
as they wonder if all of it was worth it from the journey to the percentage of profits they're shelling out to the absolving of a debt to even the forged letter they gave to Alwyn from Dr. Taganti and wondering if any of it was worth it. You motherfucker. And they will pick up the documents, put them in the desk, lock the desk, and leave the room. Did Illipel actually forge that letter that he gave to Alwyn? Yes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Did I ever roll... Oh, man. You didn't. You took them at their word. Oh, man. <laughs> Jep, you're a motherfucker. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you can feel this dull ache between your stub fingers and where the prosthetic is neatly fitted over them. If I may, you can't help but feel some melancholy over everything you've lost from your memories to your body parts to your money, and you close your fist in a display of determination to seize more for yourself, as has ever been your modus operandi. I suppose all that's left to do is discuss what is going on with Alwyn. Alwyn, you've returned to Stonehaven since your employment with the Guild Pact has ended. You've been scrounging over your old roots and pathways through the underground, and those new ones that have opened up as tides of muck and worms burrow their way ever through the porous surface of Ravnica, you find in the dark and forgotten places those things that the surface has neglected or abandoned. You would try to find in your old work a sense of serenity and comfort, but you feel out of every shadow... Around every corner, there might be lurking some insidious organization looking to disrupt your peace and the peace of your home and your family. You've noticed over the past few days that where normally Edric would have emerged from his room on brief occasion just to go through the larder and grab a sausage of dubious origin, of course, he has remained completely sealed within his room. You have perhaps heard odd muttering and chanting and strange lights appearing from beneath the door as you've passed by, and it seems whatever has captured his mind, he is falling deeper into it. Don't like that. Alwyn constantly thinks back to the last time he confronted Edric before their final fight with the Rugerva. And ever since, he hasn't really been able to bring himself to try and reach out again. And seeing Edric spiral down makes it that much harder to try and say or confront that in any way. Okay. Perhaps a week or so later, after you notice this change, you are shaken awake one night and... Edric is standing over you in your room. <sighs> Something of a manic look in his eye. I sleep with the gavel next to me, and I immediately go for it. Okay. Brother, brother, I'm not here to hurt you. I've made a breakthrough. Come with me. I don't say anything, and I follow. Okay. As you walk through the dark halls of Stonehaven, Edric is muttering incessantly. It's a code. It's a, it's a cipher. Every... The, it's the tightening gyre. I found, I found the first clue. A map, a map that will lead me to it, imprinted on the ancient life forms of this world. You've already been over this. You've got to put this down. But if I find it, it'll all make sense. I sort of stop in the middle of whatever hallway we're in. Yeah. You've got to put this down. I'm trying, I'm trying to make you see. I want to let you in. If you could... See it as I do. The patterns, the perfect alignments, the way it all fits together, it would it would tantalize you. But we don't see things the same way, do we? I can't hide forever. Please come with me. I've already gone to the depths and back to bring you back to Mother. What makes you think that there's any coming back from what you're talking about? You think it's a difference in our minds, but I've watched you. And I know this is an obsession, a sickness. You need help. Roll persuasion for me. 
I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but that is a flat 18. Okay. He takes a deep breath as you say this. Perhaps you're right. I've been wrapped up in the puzzle and the mystery of it all. It is like nothing I've ever experienced, being on the cusp of this understanding. But I don't even recognize myself. I don't know if this is the way forward, but I know I can't go back. So where am I to go, brother? Alwyn stands still for a moment, and after thinking over everything that's happened to him, his friends, and the sort of disruptions of status quos, I, I know there's no going back, but your eagerness to run full speed into the unknown is going to get you killed, brother. We both know that death is not the end for any of us. But if you go without me, or I go without you, you know we'd never hear the end of it from our mother. Tread lightly, brother. Are you saying you'll come with me? <sighs> Perhaps it's just my perspective after my events with the guild backed. This force cannot stand to go unrecognized. This foul power that you've found. That the likes of Dugunti would like to use that whoever these dark forces in the corners of the Undercity would seek to find for themselves. Well, someone's got to find it before they do, don't they? Thank you, brother. He sort of opens his arms to offer you a hug. Ah, man. Owen allows the hug. Okay. He hugs you. He says quietly in your ear, I will return. I promise. He lets go, and you hear a hum of magical energy as he dissipates into a swirling vortex of viscous green energy and dimension doors away. And I think that's a place where we can leave that one, unless there's anything else. If I can squeeze this in somewhere. Sure. I think in the brief moments of quiet where there is this sort of void in Alwyn left from the companionship of his new friends and allies, as well as that of the very close bond that he once had with Edric. He would, from time to time, visit Lana. Very nice. Your kooky Aunt Lana is happy to have your help around the rot farm. <laughs> nice. If that's what you think they're doing. <laughs> Wait, well, that insinuates some incestuous activity. I would rather you just say we're going to do mushrooms together. They're not related. Yes, but one, she's your mother's age, and two, your mother's age is in the hundreds. All right, you you made it a sex thing. It wasn't a sex thing. It was a, it was a drugs thing. Okay, it was a drugs thing. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Forgive me. Anyway. If I was having a bad trip, I would want Lana to be there. Exactly. I agree. I agree. Lana is a great drug aunt. Okay, cool. One more little thing I just want to say as we close the curtain on this Ark of Ravnica. Deep below the city, uh -oh. in the House of Dusk Mantle, the ancient sanctum of House Demir, a hooded figure meets a man with a metal arm. Tensions continue to rise, but the iron is not yet ready to strike. You have drawn too much attention to yourself, Tezzeret. Mind your words. You think you see everything, but I've seen things you could only begin to imagine. Everything is still going according to plan. Not if you continue to insert yourself in matters that do not concern you. I led you to Hefnet, didn't I? Don't like that. Perhaps. But we must be patient. There are pieces in play that must first be moved off the board. Both figures sternly and solemnly nod to each other. The man with the metal arm vanishes in a vortex of blue light, and the hooded figure stalks back into the halls of his guild. Fuck, I hate that. That's great. No, that's great. A little, uh... Marvel post credit sequence. Yes, yeah, that's right. God damn it. Got that Marvel post credit sequence swag. Let's do it. Fuck. Okay, I'm done. We can stop. All right, Ravnica, Ravnica. <laughs>
Boom. Wrap. So wrap on Ravnica. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.